that Denver has had a citywide curfew. In fact, city officials could not tell us the last time it happened, and I couldn't find evidence of the last time that anything other than a youth curfew happened. Jeremy Hohol, he just sprayed, so just be careful. On the ground, okay, along with photojournalist Austin Knox, near Lincoln and Colfax at the center of this. Jeremy. Yeah, uh, Kyle, right now, like you said, I'm standing at the corner of Lincoln and Colfax. This is kind of where the main standoff between the crowd and police has been occurring for at least the past uh, few hours here. Uh, it's kind of been a back and forth uh, all afternoon here. Police are holding this line along Colfax, and you can see them in their riot gear. You have uh, Denver police officers and officers uh, with the Aurora Police Department. They've been firing tear gas. They've been firing pepper ball rounds. Uh, and the crowd will disperse and it'll be pushed back. The crowd will be pushed back uh, towards the south side of the Capitol, but then they come back. So it's just kind of like this continuous pattern of push and resist, push and resist. But it's clear here, uh, the police department here uh, is, is not tolerating anybody that's going to cross the Colfax line. Now, I have seen people get hit with projectiles. Uh, I, I want to be careful with my terminology here. I don't know if they were rubber bullets, but it was some sort of projectile. You have uh, people out here that are acting as medics, too. They're kind of like swarming people who kind of fall to the ground, and when they get hurt, they swarm. But at this point, uh, you know, like you said, Kyle, we're, we're, we're a ways away from the curfew. Uh, and I don't think these people are going home. Uh, I don't think uh, these folks are going to obey the 8 o'clock curfew. And uh, right now, police are just standing there with their pepper ball guns. Uh, every, I would say, every, gosh, every 10, 15 minutes, it seems they start to spray or fire off their tear gas uh, rounds or they'll, they'll fire off um, flashbangs and the crowd will disperse. But then the crowd just com comes back to this point. So it seems like this is the, uh, for lack of a better term here, the line of, the line of scrimmage right here, uh, right here at Lincoln and Colfax. Um, and I, I want to be careful. I do want to throw a disclaimer out. You know, we are live on TV, so you may hear things. You may, uh, you may see things that uh, we cannot control. So let's move closer. Uh, Austin, with my photographer, I'm going to move a little bit closer. If we do uh, get into, okay, there's a flashbang right there. And you can see the protesters are dispersing. Officers are firing their tear gas guns. We're going to stay on this edge over here. I think we're safe on this end. I'm not doing shit. We're going to stay here. We are clearly marked as press. Again, the audience at home, you may hear some cursing. We can't uh, control that. Um, so there's more tear gas. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just kind of let this play out. I'm going to stay quiet here and uh, you know, reiterate, this has kind of been the pattern all evening or all afternoon. I, I can't, I don't think I can put a number to the number of people here on the grounds here at this moment. So, so Jeremy, I can, I can add some context here in terms of uh, the, the less than lethal force being used by Denver police and the other law enforcement down there. They're not using rubber bullets. Uh, that's kind of an antiquated uh, technique, although that's like kind of a colloquial phrase. People will say it like Kleenex or dumpster, you know, whenever police are firing something that's not a live bullet. Uh, what they're firing are those pepper rounds uh, that have the, the pepper spray-like substance in them, and they're firing foam projectiles, which are actually pretty big. They're bigger than a silver dollar. They're closer to the size of your palm, uh, and they can knock somebody back. So when you see some of those rifles firing uh, those foam rounds, that's what we're seeing there. And then obviously we also see the, the tear gas canisters. We see the flashbangs, and we occasionally will see devices that appear to combine a pyrotechnic and the smoke as we watch that one young woman get her eyes washed out. Jeremy, can I ask you, do you just see the push and pull, or do you ever see anybody taken into custody? Do they ever section off a small group and, and, and arrest folks, or is it just back and forth? <laughs> it's been a back and forth. I have not seen anybody uh, get placed in handcuffs. I did see an ambulance come here on scene. Hello, here we go. Here's some more uh, tear gas being deployed uh, towards the crowd. I have to Kyle to answer your question though. I have not seen anybody get arrested. Uh, it's it's clear uh, members of the crowd here uh, continue to. Uh, 
We, uh, we apologize for that. We apologize for that uh, vulgarity. Uh, we, we continue to see some members of the crowd here uh, kind of really, really instigate the, you know, the, the police uh, and push back against police. Uh, but uh, for, for the most part, Kyle, I have not seen anybody uh, get arrested at this point yet. I haven't seen that yet. But I did see an ambulance roll up to the scene about an hour ago where uh, it looks like a person was hit with uh, that foam projectile you're talking about. Uh, and that's that's what I've seen so far. But, you know, we're, we're away from curfew. I would imagine I would imagine that the arrest could possibly uh, uh, begin here uh, probably right around eight o'clock uh, because, you know, we, we know the city said that <coughs> they would enforce that. You can see some uh, <coughs> some people here may be hurt. We're going to walk back a little bit. That way we uh, uh, we don't uh, get this tear gas in our faces. You can really feel the tear gas. I mean, I'm on the edge of when they fire this tear gas and um, you can really fear. I mean, feel what it does to the human body. You know, it's it's a really uh, aggravating feeling, even just a little bit of it. And so you can imagine if you're that close and you inhale that stuff, uh, what it does to your lungs and what it does to your breathing. It's, it's, it's really something. So this is it. This is the scene in Denver tonight. I mean, you know, um, you, you said it earlier, Kyle. I mean, this was not trending in a good direction. And I don't see this clearing up anytime soon tonight. I mean, this is this is clearly a conflict that is going to last. I mean, I think it's a safe bet. We're going to be here all night tonight watching this play out. So I, I think folks have, have asked us a lot, Jeremy, you know, why are you calling it a protest when it's a riot? And the answer is, at noon, it was a protest. It was not a riot. Yes. At 10 o'clock, it's a riot. It's not a protest. And somewhere in between, it shifts between the two. At 5 o'clock, I think some of the last of the protesters were putting down their signs. We're in riot territory now at 7 p.m., clearly. I know people get very frustrated with us because they think we're using the wrong terminology, but we're just trying to be clear that both things are happening every day in Denver. And want to say we're often talking about different groups of people. The daytime protest organizers tend to be more African-Americans, tend to be slightly older, and the younger crowd is mighty white and looking to mix it up with police. And there we see it as they advance on the line. What's happening up there, Jeremy? It looks like they were dragging someone towards the police line, I think. And maybe that person is hurt and they're seeking to get medical attention. Let's, look, let's go forward and see it. Austin, follow me over here. Let's see if we can get a better shot. Yeah, it looks like that person was hurt over there, Austin. It looks like they dragged that person up to the police line that they wait that way they can get some sort of medical attention it looks like that person is walking but they, they dragged that person up to the police line so it, it looks like uh, they're walking they're walking him over to the ambulance at this point right now so that's uh that's what just happened there and you know to, to your point to the terminology kyle i mean it's it's one of those things when you're covering protests and i remember when i was uh, when i was here for occupy denver I mean, we do have to be very careful about our terminology, but at, at the same time, when we when we observe things, we're, we're observing things as 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 we as we just see them. And I want to be careful with my terminology, and I know you want to be careful with your terminology. And I, I think I agree with you that we're we're at a point where you know we have to you have to call it what it is. I mean, this is this is riot territory, you know. And again, to, to disclaim uh, you, to our audience. You can audience, just tell from, the, from the, the posture of the folks who are out there um, that yeah. they're there seeking confrontation with police. Uh, you will hear folks in some political circles uh, say that this is an effective form of protest, that this is, in fact, the only thing that moves the needle in America, and that unless people see scenes like this, uh, they're never going to get upset enough to change anything. There are other folks in other political circles will say that this is just worthless violence. Folks can make up their own mind about what they're seeing. But let's be real clear that what we are seeing is a group of people, unlike those who were in the streets of Denver earlier today, who want confrontation with police. They want physical confrontation with police. That is the point of what we are seeing. You know, I want to I want to point out, I mean, this is just a weird scene for me, just to point out, I think, um, 
I want to point out, there's, they're, they're still doing construction over there in the middle of this. This is kind of weird. I'm sorry to, if this is weird for me to point out, but maybe this is why uh, you know, police are holding this line here along Colfax. That's the RTD station. And it's kind of a weird scene to see the tractors moving dirt for whatever reason. I don't know if they're still doing construction work, but it's kind of uh, strange. If we look towards the west here, you can see how long the line rocks. of police are. Yeah. Maybe they are covering rocks. I think, I think they're sure covering they're rocks. I think doing. that's the empty yard that people have been okay. scavenging rocks out of for the last couple of nights. And I think they've brought in either dirt or sand or something like that, and they're covering rocks. Huh. Yeah, that, 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 that could be what they're doing. If, if you see our view here right now, you can see the long line of police officers. And to reiterate to people who are joining us right now, I'm standing on Colfax here between Broadway and Lincoln. And this is essentially the line that has existed between protesters and police for a few hours now. This uh, is kind of like the confrontational line that is gonna probably play out here. There's just this continuous push and push back. Protesters come to the line, police fire their tear gas, they fire their pepper rounds, they fire, the, fire their foam projectiles, and then the crowd goes back and then they come back again. So I think this is gonna continue until eight o'clock and then I, I would imagine at eight o'clock, that's when the police department may start to uh, uh, maybe bring out their zip ties and start arresting people for a, a break of curfew. But I mean, you, you, we, we were talking about numbers uh, earlier today, Kyle, of police and the numbers of police and the number of people here on the ground. Before we went live about 45 minutes ago on Lincoln, there was a group of uh, Denver police officers that essentially got swarmed by the crowd here and they had and they had to retreat and it was it was really something to see and it was really clear that there are more i mean it's clear that there are more protesters than police here kyle back to you yeah that's the thing jeremy when when you say we've got a curfew coming in 45 minutes time eight o'clock when somebody's mere presence on the street becomes a crime and the city <laughs> says we will enforce that they're not going to enforce it with the numbers that we see there um, that's what we've seen play out in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where they have a curfew. They've told people to get out of the streets, but the mayor and the governor say, we don't have the number of officers needed in order to clear the streets. Because it's not just like grab your dance partner one to one. It's not one officer to one person in the crowd. They need a number of officers to be able to safely take somebody into custody without having those officers at risk. And based on the numbers that we currently yeah. see out there at your one position, those officers are in no position to effectuate arrests in that crowd right now based on the number of people that we see out there. Jeremy, I want to give you a second. Take a look around. Um, are you okay? Yeah. We got pepper balls going. Yeah, we're okay. We're, 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 yeah, we're okay. We're in a spot where we're kind of on the edge. We're clearly marked as press. Uh, these officers to my left of me clearly know that we're press, so I think we're okay. Uh, so you can see this is the, the Kyle. What you're, you're seeing here is the pattern that's been playing out, you know, for the last you know couple of hours. It's you know, police will fire, you know, their tear gas. The crowd disperses from this corner. And I would imagine after they fire their rounds, the crowd is going to come back to this corner. So, um, I mean, that's that's how things are playing out here. This is this is looking uh, west at Broadway and uh, Colfax here, and you can see the crowd is amassed over there. But there's really not any conflict <coughs> between the crowd and police down there. Uh, but there's clearly a long line. Yeah. One thing I have not seen yet, and I and I know I, one thing I have not seen yet is the National Guard. I understand. Uh, that uh, they were going to be called in. I have not seen the National Guard uh, here. Right now, I'm only seeing police uh, with the Aurora Police Department and uh, the Denver Police Department at this point, Kyle. <coughs> yeah, me. so the, the Guard the guard members, uh, our Jennifer Meckles confirmed with the National Guard that they were expecting to have about 100 troops in Denver tonight. But the sticky thing is, is what they plan to do with them. It's possible that we will never see a National Guard member, that they will simply be doing behind the scenes logistics things. They might be doing people transports here and there or whatever else. Uh, in fact, I, I would almost be surprised if we see National Guards men and women on the front line because they don't have the day-to-day -day experience with it the way that Denver police and Aurora police do. So it's possible that we won't see Guard in that capacity. Arnold 
Wren was saying that he saw uh, Colorado State Patrol suit up in riot gear and leave the Capitol property. That's the first time that we've witnessed that in the three days of protest. Their job is to defend the Capitol. That's their turf. Denver police usually defer to them there, but Denver police have been on the Capitol property during these three days of, of riots uh, defending that space. And then we saw CSP come across uh, come across Lincoln to help out across the street at the Civic Center bus station around 5.30 today. So you've got this massive line of people uh, that, that Jeremy and his fellow journalist Austin Knox are showing us that are faced off with police there on Colfax at Lincoln. So as you think about how the city's divided there, behind the police is the downtown business core, all right? So you've got your 16th Street Mall, you've got all of your, uh, your skyscrapers and so on and so forth are back there. South on the protest side where they're being confined is the state capitol, Civic Center Park, the city and county building, so okay. History Colorado, uh, the state courts, uh, and then some residential areas to the south. So that is the area where they appear to want to keep the protesters. We will come back to Jeremy's position in just a little bit, but let's head south a little bit. Uh, head back toward where uh, where the protesters have a bit more free reign, where they're not face-to-face -face with police, at least not that we know of. That's where our Noel Brennan is, two blocks south at 13th and Lincoln. Yeah, Kyle, just a couple blocks away, and it looks a little different out here. There's a bunch of protesters in the middle of Lincoln, right here at 14th, and then you see a line of Denver police officers standing in front of them. There have been moments of, of different chants. There have been moments where protesters have gotten down on their knees. Uh, they have shouted George Floyd's name in the past couple of minutes. Um, at this point, officers are just kind of standing steady um, as people are out here chanting. They have not pushed this crowd back. Um, don't know if that will happen in the immediate future or, future or not. Uh, this has been going on for, for several minutes now, uh, just right in the middle of Lincoln here at 14th. Denver police are just standing with their, um, their rifles, which have uh, pepper ball um, pellets in them uh, that we've seen fired today and over the past couple of nights. Uh, so we are just kind of waiting for the inevitable here at some point, whether or not Denver police will start pushing these people back and off of the middle of the road. Uh, we're not too far from 8 o'clock. I think the consensus out here, Kyle, is that people are not going to be leaving when 8 o'clock hits and when we get to that curfew point. I think we all wonder uh, how Denver police will treat that. Certainly they can't arrest everyone who is out here, um, but the, the consensus is that a lot of people simply are not going to be leaving uh, because the city has decided to impose a curfew at 8 o'clock. So. Uh, again, we're just monitoring what's happening right here. People are in the middle of the road, and again, Denver police officers standing right in front of them. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as anything, if anything, happens out here. I, I know I feel like you're standing right about at the spot where we watched one of those bushes along the base of the History Colorado parking garage burn yesterday, and then protesters put it out with water. Is, is that the spot where you are? Sorry, Kyle, I just heard a, it sounded like large flashbang in the distance. Yeah, there's another one right there. And a third. You see the smoke in the distance there too. Usually when that happens, what we've seen from this vantage point is there's a whole bunch of people that start going toward the Capitol grounds and then they disperse to this area. Um, there's another, another sound. Do we have the ability to get back like up to gas Jeremy Mahola, just back blew. up at Colfax and Lincoln? I think that uh, I think that action is up by his position. Do we have the ability to go up there now? Yeah, let's go back. Okay. There we go. You okay? All right, Jeremy, hey, Austin. What are you seeing? Yeah, we're, Kyle. Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Can you can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Go. Okay. It looks like. Uh, okay. Okay. Here we go. So it looks like. Uh, Looks like there was more tear gas fired uh, by police towards the crowd here. You can see people kind of applaud, you know, doing some applause. I, I just don't like this is just a, a pattern that just keeps happening where police fire their rounds. The crowd gets pushed back and then the crowd goes back up to the to the police line. Um, I want to show you the sheer number of people that are kind of observing here. Let's go ahead and pan to the right here, Austin. You can see Along the Capitol grounds here, uh, here in Silas, you know, you can see thousands and thousands of people just kind of 
you know, you have, you have a lot of people watching, but then you have the people in the very front that are clearly trying to get up to the police line. And what some of these people are doing is they're trying to grab the tear gas canister and then throw it back at police. And we've seen that kind of play out uh, over and over again. So you can see the crowd has dispersed from that corner of Colfax and Lincoln, where I said earlier that that continues to be almost like, you know, for lack of a better term, the line of scrimmage between protesters or uh, the, the rioters and police. And now uh, we're at a point where we can feel the, the, the tear gas coming towards this uh, this direction over here. So um, it looks like it looks like a lot of people here. I think I think we'll walk, and I think we'll be okay. Let's let's continue to walk, Austin. Um, what, what's interesting is a lot of people have brought goggles. A lot of people have brought milk. Uh, milk is a thing that you know that you, you put on your face if you've been hit with with tear gas, or I believe it, it helps you know mitigate uh, the effects of you know that those chemical agents. And you you see milk like over here, you see gallons of milk, just kind of you know people have came prepared for this. You know you know you see gallons of milk and then. I did see a group of people come here with like swimmer goggles too, and so you still you, you do see people kind of like geared up, um, you know, with, with goggles and helmets and masks and, and that's of that nature. One thing that you did point out, Kyle, and I think I want to make a point of it here, is is you know we're we're in an eight, we're in the middle of a pandemic. We, we we can't forget that we're in the middle of a pandemic, and everybody is wearing a mask, and so when when eight o'clock comes around. And when police start to, you know, put, you know, zip ties on people and maybe start enforcing other types of laws beyond beyond the curfew laws, they're going to need to identify people. And all they've got when you look around the crowd here is just people's eyes and the tops of their heads. So it's going to be a little bit difficult, you know, uh, for that to play out here uh, this evening, especially especially when uh, you know when when things get a little bit darker. But take a look at the number of people here. I mean, I've I've never seen, <coughs> excuse me. I've never seen this many people gather around the Capitol. I've been here in Denver for nine years. I remember my, my first time here was co covering the Occupy Denver protests, and that wasn't, uh, you know, that was big, but it wasn't this big. This is, this is amazingly big. And when you look at the Capitol, the Capitol, I don't know, Austin, if you could kind of point your camera up towards the Capitol. The Capitol has been um, surrounded by people all day today. Uh, you know, just standing here, and this is essentially gonna be, I think, where this is gonna play out all night uh, as uh, this curfew uh, begins to loom. The Capitol, I walked along the edge, you can't see it where we're standing, but the Capitol has been uh, marked up with a lot of graffiti. So uh, there's gonna be a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that are gonna have to be cleaned up. And excuse the curse words that you may see in our video here. Um, we don't, we don't uh, intend to put those on our air. So right now we're on the west steps of the Capitol. Um, looks like the police department and the police officers have uh, maybe stopped firing their rounds and now we're back now we're back Austin let's pan over now we're back to that same thing where the crowd is moving towards that corner of uh, Colfax and uh, Lincoln so we'll still be here and uh, this is uh, this is it this is uh, this is Denver <coughs> Yeah, I'm glad you've climbed your way towards some fresh air, Jeremy, as you make your way up the hill to 5280 on the on the Capitol steps. Uh, just got a bit of new information from our Jennifer Meckles, uh, who has been in touch with the Colorado National Guard about their role tonight. Uh, Mayor Hancock requested their presence in the city to deal with rioters. Uh, Governor Jared Polis uh, agreed to activate them in that capacity, and we're told about 100 troops are in Denver tonight. But here's the interesting thing. 100 National Guard members at nine sites in Denver. So, so 10 Guard members per site at nine different places. Um, we'll continue to seek clarity from the National Guard about what exactly they're doing in the city, but that sounds like much more of a logistical and support role as opposed to you're going to see 100 people lined up in fatigues uh, ready to go tonight. Uh, it really sounds to me like National Guard is in more of a support role, which would then allow law enforcement to move more of their folks toward the front line. Uh, we have Aurora police down there tonight. Expect that there will be other agencies that we'll be able to identify. Last night, out of nowhere, when we were watching the riots around uh, 11, 11.30, a Jeffco Sheriff SWAT vehicle rolled through the back of Ryan Herrer's live shot. We had no idea that they were involved in the fight until we saw their vehicle. So we are learning as we go. And of course, we get a general idea of this from law enforcement, but they don't tell us numbers. They don't tell us who exactly is involved because they don't want the rioters knowing that.
Let's bring Steve Stager back into the mix. Steve, you were out there last night in the thick of it, back out there tonight by the Capitol. What's the same, what's different? Uh, I'll tell you, this crowd is a lot larger than it was last night. Uh, Hancock this failed guy, us. This guy, oh, uh, he, he said uh, Mayor Hancock failed us is what he actually just said. Uh, this crowd is a lot bigger than it and a lot more spread out than it was last night. Uh, it was much more concentrated. Uh, as we watched the crowd move through last night, the police were able to move them away and then they moved back. But this is a much more spread out group all the way from the uh, the Capitol steps here all the way into this park. It's wide and we are looking down Lincoln right now and you can see that roadblock that police have set up. In fact, we're going to start moving through the crowd and kind of get an eye what it looks like here at Civic Center Park. Uh, like I said, Kyle, the, the, the striking difference that I notice right now is just the fact that people are a lot more spread out than they were last night. It's interesting to watch. Uh, we've watched this develop. You know what? We're gonna move. We're gonna move back a little bit here. Uh, we've watched uh, we watched this roadblock develop here along uh, along Lincoln, and and what's interesting is the the construction equipment that was over in the RTD facility is now back. It seems to be backing up or going down Lincoln Avenue. Hard to tell if it's part of the pro uh, part protest patrol here or if that is they're just getting that equipment out of the way. One other observation, and I've noticed this a couple of times, and I don't know if Taylor probably is going to hate me for pointing this out because it's probably going to be tough for him to see, but in the air over this crowd right now is a drone. And Kyle, last night we were talking about all of the different perspectives uh, and the difference in the 10 years between the DNC protests and the protests here now. The difference mainly is that everyone has some sort of camera nowadays. Everyone has some sort of perspective. I can tell you from taking classes on, on the drones that we operate, this is an unsafe use in, in our book of a drone. You're never supposed to have it up over people, Kyle. But that drone is just kind of hovering there and watching that line between protesters and the police. Mm. It's interesting, Steve. Um, I, I, was just, I was checking the flight tracker, and I don't see DPD's Air One up tonight on the flight tracker. They might have it up. Uh, later on this evening, um, but uh, it looks like they're satisfied with the eye in the sky that the uh, the drone is providing. Can I ask you this, Steve? Do you get the sense in terms of people's reaction to you, their posture toward police, that this is the same crowd that was out there last night, different folks? I mean, obviously, there's no way for you to know for sure unless you're recognizing individual people. But does it seem well, to be the I have, same cohort I, with the I, same I, attitudes or different folks? I was going to say, I have recognized several faces out here uh, from last night, including someone who was kind of riding his bike up and down Lincoln last night. He's now in Civic Center Park, also going around and kind of passing messages along to some of the folks here. One of the things that I've noticed, and we, we've ta we talked about this a bit last night, is that concept of field medics, uh, the folks who are helping people out. Uh, and it appears that there's some, some motion uh, on the front lawn of the Capitol right now. I'll keep an eye on it. But the, the thing that you were talking about last night, the field medics who are here to try to help people who have been impacted by uh, tear gas. During our five o'clock show, uh, when Taylor and I were covering an area, oh, well, that was, that appeared to be a firework, but everyone's moving and it appears that police are throwing items down the road. So we're gonna back up a little bit here. What we were talking about, though, Kyle, is that concept of field medics, people who are here to help protesters who may have had some sort of impact with, uh, with the tear gas. Taylor and I took it really rough at the end of the 5 o'clock show. We were kind of crouched down by the side of the Capitol, and someone came up and offered us milk and offered us uh, water. They, uh, we've had people come up and offer us food. Uh, this, is a very, this crowd is, is kind of banding together and making sure that they have what they need on a night like tonight. You see some people reacting who are pretty close to that tear gas. I can tell you, it is not a fun feeling, Kyle. Mm. Yeah, you see that medic right ahead of you there, right in the middle of Taylor's shot with that big red cross and what yep, looks right like here. tape on the back of a jacket. 
Yep, telling folks that, uh, that they racket. are yep. there to render medical aid. Yeah, I, I tell, this is this is so reminiscent of. Oh yeah, oh there's another guy right there. I was looking at somebody that was up uh, a ways ahead, but um, this is so reminiscent of. Uh, the Democratic National Convention in 2008, when you had people who came in and had experience with these confrontations with police and came with a level of preparedness that you do not see at your average protest, where there's a chance that people might mix up with police. And we're seeing that here tonight. There's people with shields. Uh, the field medics are out. Uh, these are people who have been in situations, confrontations like this with law enforcement before, and they know what is necessary to hang in for the long haul tonight. Kyle, I don't know if, you, if you're if you still are watching my shot, but you can see a protester right over here holding a sign, and in her hand is a half gallon of milk. Uh, that is an incredibly common sight around here, uh, especially for the folks who you imagine figured that they were going to be dealing with some of this tonight. Uh, when they came here. Yeah. All right, Steve, thank you very much. We want to head a block south of your position where Noel Brennan is at 13th and Lincoln. That was a much more chill standoff with police for some time, but Noel, I understand that folks are trying to put something together down there. Yeah, so the, the crowd at 13th and Lincoln is, is kind of thinning just a bit, but there still are police officers standing in the middle of the road, and there are still protesters. But in the past five minutes, We've seen them build this barricade right at Lincoln and 14th. They brought in chain link fences. Uh, they brought in road closed signs. They've even brought in a, a picnic table uh, that they're working on over there. I think they're trying to, yep, over here, Ann, if you want to show them with the picnic table. They're shoving that up against uh, the side here. So, uh, Kyle, I asked uh, one of the people out here why they were doing this. They said that this is an ideal spot for them to post up after 8 o'clock. They said that they want to be ready for police when the curfew hits. That's why they're building uh, this makeshift barricade here with just about everything, anything that they can find. These chain link fences were put up uh, near Civic Center Park. We saw them put up in front of uh, the city and county building, uh, which was vandalized uh, last night. Uh, so we literally past 10 minutes, we've watched people just coming across the grass, carrying these chain link fence pieces and shoving them together here in the middle of the street. Haven't ever seen anything like this before. Uh, and again, protesters are saying that they're going to be ready uh, at eight o'clock when the curfew hits. Um, just kind of surreal looking at this right now. And again, uh, down the street just a block away at, at 13th. Uh, the crowd has certainly thinned out, but Denver police uh, are still standing in the middle of the road there along with a, a small group of, of protesters. There are still a bunch of people up on the, uh, the Capitol grounds there. As you see another guy here bring a section of, of chain link fence to add to this, this street barricade that they're building. So Kyle, yeah, we'll keep monitoring I, stuff down here. It, um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens it, at 8 o'clock. I think we know what's going to happen at 8 o'clock. I think if you, if this, yeah. this to me right here is the surest sign yet of what we are going to see tonight. If there was any question that people wanted to mix it up, make their stand, and then disperse, or even just do what they did last night, do the cat and mouse game, that's out the window if they're building a barricade like this is stinking Les Mis in the middle yeah. of Denver. Uh, and uh, that's going to be that's going to become their fallback position. Um, Noel, I would just urge you and Ann just be real cautious here in the next 20 minutes. If police come that way, you don't want to get caught up there against that barricade. So just make sure that you've got two routes of exit there. But appreciate you getting right in there so that we could take yeah. a look at that situation there. That's going to be an ugly spot tonight and Kyle, at 14th. And Lincoln. Kyle, Go ahead, Noel. Point to, yeah, just speaking to what you're talking about, with them being prepared and, and essentially ready for a fight, uh, they have the barricade here. And then just a little bit further down uh, 14th, we saw that they had set up like a big milk station. There were people out there that had gallons and gallons of milk and were calling people over. They were kind of like stockpiling uh, milk supplies. So it's almost seeming like this is going to be their, their home base. Uh, you know, once eight o'clock hits and the curfew and, uh, you know, whatever will happen right. when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. You caught me checking Twitter there and talking to folks. Uh, Noel, I appreciate it. 
you and Ann Herbst, stay safe down there. Um, that's that's what's happening tonight. And and to be honest with you, I, I think a, a lot of us, uh, this is what we were talking about earlier today, from the moment that Mayor Hancock laid down the ultimatum this morning, when he said that Denver has had enough and that it wasn't going to happen again tonight, and that there was going to be a curfew, and that there's going to be more law enforcement from around the metro area, and there was going to be the support of the National Guard. That is when we knew what was going to happen tonight, because he outlined what the city was going to do and what law enforcement was going to do. And those of us who have covered the folks on the other side of the barricade at various protests have a general idea of how they view the city and law enforcement, and they weren't just going to go home. Everybody knew that. Let's listen into something that the mayor said this morning about what he believes happens when violence follows a peaceful protest against police brutality. The person who brought a crowbar last night wasn't thinking about George Floyd. Neither were the people who brought assault rifles and handguns, explosive bottles. They weren't thinking about George Floyd, nor those who brought baseball bats the night before. We cannot and we will not continue to put the lives of innocent residents and demonstrators, officers and safety officials, or anyone else at risk at the hands of people bent on destruction and criminal activity. In short, we have seen enough. We are not going to wait for these incidents to escalate any further, or God forbid someone loses their life before we take action. Again, we have seen enough. That was Mayor Hancock this morning. Yesterday, it seemed the mayor was sad. This morning, it seemed the mayor was mad. Let's go back out to Steve Stager, who is, I believe, either in the middle of Lincoln or in Civic Center Park there in front of the Capitol. So, Steve, you're aware now, just for your own safety, if you're unable to see it, that there's a barricade built in the street uh, less than a block south of you. Yes, I, I can give you a better idea of my location. I am at the corner of Broadway and Colfax. The barricade for police is right over here at Lincoln. I was just curious to see what this side of the park looked like uh, as much of the crowd is closer to the Capitol and much of the crowd is closer to that blockade. Uh, just to get an idea, we did see a, a, a pretty big crowd of people over here when we parked along Broadway. We want to make sure, just to give you an idea of the safety measures we're taking, we want to make sure we have a vehicle that we can get into just in case something happens. Uh, so we parked nearby, uh, and when we got out of the car, I saw a lot of people in the road on Broadway. That, that crowd has tended to move closer to that barricade. You can see some Denver police officers right over here with the shields uh, and the, the, those pepper ball guns. It looks a bit like a paintball gun. Uh, and photojournalist Taylor Schuss can tell you what that feels like because he took one in the ankle uh, last night as we were uh, trying to retreat from, a, from an area where we were. Uh, but this kind of gives you just a different perspective of that protest. Uh, I, I know a lot of us here are, are keeping an eye on, on, on different ways that we can kind of move away from the park, Kyle. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that we saw this. There are officers over here just kind of flanking the RTD station. It almost looks like they're protecting that construction site. Uh, it, it, there, I, I have to say, there's a lot of debris in there. Uh, and if what we saw in previous nights is any indicator, uh, there could be some things thrown at police officers. I'm sure that they would prefer that the people don't get to that. So they're, they've uh, established a position around that to try to, to, to kind of keep the calm here. Yeah. So so, uh, Steve, uh, our partner, uh, Colorado Politics, Marianne Goodland, saw them move that equipment in today. And from the looks of it, I think that they put sand or dirt or loose material over rock to keep people from being able to grab it and throw it. Steve, thank you. You stay safe. Let's go to Jeremy Hohola. He is directly east of Steve's position there, I, I believe, still at the corner. Dividing line between the protesters and the downtown core of the city. Yeah, this this corner at Lincoln and Colfax continues to be the corner that, you know, the crowd and police continue to magnetize to. Uh, if you take a look, I'm going to have Austin, our photographer, kind of pan over to the ground here. I don't know if you can see it. You can see all of that debris on the ground there. That's that's less than lethal rounds. I believe you'll see some tear gas canisters in there. 
Uh, and then as we were walking, we found some um, pepper bullets here. And sorry to do this on the fly to you, Austin. This is what some of the uh, pepper uh, uh, pellets look like. Uh, this one uh, did not uh, hit anybody. It looks like it just fell to the ground. So this is the corner where police and protesters have been facing off. And I think this is going to be the, the place I'd imagine if arrests begin at 8 o'clock sharp, this is where arrests may happen. But here's the thing. You know, we're, we're very close to the curfew. I have not heard any loudspeaker announcement from the police department telling people that the curfew is going to happen in 15 minutes. It's 744. So there hasn't really been any loudspeaker announcement telling the crowd that the curfew is, is happening at 8 o'clock. Perhaps they'll do that here pretty soon. Who knows? Um, but uh, you know, this is this is the scene. This is the the scene that has remained here for you know a few hours now. You have the crowd, and then you have the line of police, and it's 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 been the same kind of pattern throughout the afternoon here. Police will fire fire their less than lethal rounds at the crowd. The crowd will disperse from this corner, and then the crowd almost immediately will come back to this corner and <coughs> stand face to face uh, b b before police here. And so you can see. There are people here that uh, want to get in the face of police officers, and you can see police officers there to the left with their um, with their their, um, their 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 gear. So the, the sun is going down. Uh, it's going to get dark here pretty soon, uh, I'd imagine, in the next hour. And uh, Denver is going to look quite different. I um, mean, it already looks different right now in this part of downtown. Denver is going to look very different here in the next in the next hour, I'd imagine, especially when that curfew, that curfew at eight o'clock, uh, you know, uh, hits the mark. And we'll see, we'll see what the police response is because you have far more people here than, than police officers. And I'd imagine, I'd imagine once arrests start happening, that that could aggravate some people here. Some people may not be happy to see that. So let's, let's see how close we can get. Uh, we're going to be careful because this is, we, we apologize for that vulgarity. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. We're going to see how close we can get here. Uh, but this is where, where people have been standing right here at the corner. And I, I, I would imagine they're going to probably uh, be dispersed here again here pretty soon once police start uh, firing their tear gas rounds. Kyle, back to you. Yeah. All right, Jeremy. Uh, you stay safe. Uh, we're going to uh, shift down to uh, Steve Stager again, uh, who is further down that line. Again, uh, law enforcement has built a, an east-west demarcation line along Colfax, separating the protesters that are in front of the Capitol and in Civic Center Park from the downtown business core, from uh, the 16th Street Mall, and so forth. And both Steve and Jeremy are there at various points uh, along the line. Steve? And Kyle, yes, I'm actually right at the corner of Broadway and Colfax. Again, where we were, we're just a little bit closer to this line of officers. And in a striking scene right now, a lot of these protesters are on their knees in front of the uh, police officers who have, again, formed that barricade around the outside here. Uh, it, it is a, a bit of a smaller crowd on this side. I think the large barricade is drawing a lot more people to the other side. Uh, but uh, I, 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 hear, I hear a lot of jarring at the officers who are standing here but not necessarily any action. Um, it is a relatively calm spot right now as we are at 747, some 13 minutes away uh, from that eight o'clock deadline, that eight o'clock curfew. Uh, but this, uh, it's interesting as I'm, as I'm standing here, someone's walking by me and yelling about the first aid that they are ready to offer anyone here. I, I, it was a striking scene when we walked through Civic Center Park a little bit earlier someone uh, was carrying an, a protester to try to get them to safety. There had been some sort of encounter, they said. Uh, obviously, we weren't there when that encounter happened, so I can't really tell you what exactly happened. Uh, but just to, to be mindful that there are people here who are ready to help out. And, uh, and here we are almost 10 minutes before that deadline and watching this line of officers here at the corner of Broadway and Colfax, Kyle. 
Steve, let's hang on your shot there on, on the line. Um, Jeremy was saying something a while ago about how there hadn't been any kind of announcement, you know, 15 minutes till curfew or whatever. Uh, not sure if there's going to be any kind of curfew announcement down there. It'll be interesting to see whether they announce the crowd that they need to clear out. Uh, before they move on them again. That's something that we've seen in past protests a lot more than this time. This time around, these last three days, we've seen a lot more of just police advancing on protesters. But when you talk about how, how Denver has dealt with curfews, nobody at the city can come up with the last time that Denver had a citywide curfew in place. I did some research this afternoon, couldn't find one either. Denver has had youth curfews we've got flash. for young people back to the 1800s. Flashbangs back up at... Uh, at Lincoln and Colfax. Things, things are firing back up at Lincoln and Colfax, Kyle, and, and I can give you an idea. It, again, it's tough to tell who is using what here. We've seen these protesters use fireworks, but when those, those booms that you hear, when that happens, there's almost a crowd or a, a cloud of sparks uh, that goes pretty significantly in the air. I, I imagine that's a warning sign um, that you may not be want to be in that area very long. Again, we're a block away from there. We're at the corner of Colfax and Broadway as the crowd here starts yelling, hands up, don't shoot. They, uh, and excuse me, I'm going to sneeze here because uh, there is something wafting over here. Uh, I think I'm good. I didn't, you see, I talked myself out of it. Uh, here at the corner of Colfax and Broadway, the hands up, don't shoot uh, is happening where uh, this is, again, the, the calm center of the line. We've seen all of the action, all of those loud booms, all of uh, the tear gas near uh, Lincoln and Colfax. But here we are, and, and this is a relatively calm scene, Kyle. So Steve just had the most interesting experience. I couldn't hear you for the last 30 seconds because my earpiece is plugged into a cell phone, just like your earpiece is. And Denver just pushed a text alert to every cell phone within the city telling people that there is an 8 p.m. curfew. So it blared over the cell phone and it drowned you out for the last 30 seconds. I don't know if it hit your cell phone downtown either or whether you're going to get it as well. But in terms of city notifications, that is the second uh, emergency notification blast that they have sent out to people that, like, takes over uh, people's phones. Uh, it's 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 a far cry from the way that Denver would notify people of the curfew back in the late uh, 1800s. They had a curfew oh, whistle, yeah. uh, like a siren, and they would sound it three times. Yeah. At uh, I at just had PM, that, uh, and then at 9 p.m. in the summer, and the three-time curfew whistle would tell all the kids to run inside. That was the late 1800s curfew in Denver. That's how far back youth curfews date. Our modern curfew law in Denver dates to 1994 after the so-called summer of violence. But the idea of everybody, man, woman, and child, being told to stay home and stay out of the streets at a certain time, that is unprecedented in recent Denver history. City could not tell us the last time that that happened trying to figure out now it looked like police officers might have been advancing south down Lincoln in front of the Capitol but I think they're going to just move cones out of the way we have seen this on all three nights of the protest when protesters use things uh, as either projectiles or as shields like they'll use road signs as shields the police will go in move in tactically with a small group take that stuff and then pull it back behind their line so that it can't be used against them so that's what we saw there they have forced that line back at the Capitol significantly. That street corner that you're looking at, top right corner of the, uh, the street, so the southeast corner of the street, uh, that is where Jeremy Hohol had been standing for some time, for the better part of an hour. And they've clearly been scattered and, and pushed back. I have to wonder, and I, I don't know enough about the way that the people who are semi-professional at protesting operate and communicate with each other. We know that they have, have uh, uh, walkie-talkies, uh, so they're not relying on, like, if cell phone signals get jammed and that kind of thing. We see that at various protests where there's super organized people out there. But I'm curious whether the folks who are on that, that so-called front line there uh, in front of the Capitol and in Civic Center know that there's been a barricade built behind them, just south of them uh, at 13, 14th and Lincoln and whether they know that that's where they can go at 8 o'clock if police advance. Um, Jeremy Hohola, where are you right now? You've been pushed back off that corner. 
yeah, we 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 got uh, we got uh, in a spot where we uh, we're behind the, the protest or the the crowd here, and then now you can see the the crowd has been dispersed back from Lincoln and Colfax, and police have actually pushed up, uh, you know, uh, closer to the to the intersection here. The crowd right now continues uh, to kind of. Uh, you know, a stand here, and I, I'd imagine they're going to push uh, again up towards uh, Lincoln and Colfax, that main corner right now. Uh, I, I've seen people get hurt out here. Uh, I've seen people, you know, uh, have have uh, some moments where they've had to kind of be taken care of by the impromptu medic crews that uh, uh, my colleague Steve Sager has been talking about that we've seen around here. Okay, here we go. Look, look, it looks like something's happening here. Looks like this. Looks like the pro, the, the 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 people here are setting up a fence, and there's a there's a person throwing a water bottle at police. Now they're firing, now they're firing pepper rounds. Um, so it's it's that back and forth that I've been talking about all afternoon here, Kyle. There's a guy that just kicked a, a tear gas canister back towards police. Here's a tear gas canister. We should probably get away from this one right here. We're gonna walk over here. Yep, let's go. I think we're still safe. Yep, yep. yep. You want nothing to do with that? Yeah, let's okay. let's go. I, yeah, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Let's turn back here. Um, so this is this is kind of like the, for lack of a better term, the ebb and flow, the violent ebb and flow between the crowd and police. Tear gas is fired. Pepper spray is uh, you know fired. The crowd pushes back, and then I'd imagine they're gonna come back. But now they have a fence over there. And then somebody fired, uh, I know, I think it was during Noel or, or, or Steve's live shot, somebody fired an actual firework that didn't look like a, a tear gas canister. So now you can see people kind of throwing stuff back at police. Uh, the crowd has been pushed back from that corner now, but it looks like uh, there's people here that clearly want to continue their conflict uh, with the police department. Take a look at all of that tear gas over there. Take a look at all of that tear gas. So much has happened at this corner over the past few hours. It's just. It's just really something. Uh, right when I uh, got off of my last, last live shot with you, Kyle, I was talking about how they didn't make it an announcement for the curfew, but right after we ended, they did make that announcement over a, a, a megaphone. So uh, they've, they've made that clear. Uh, I think people here do know that their curfew is at 8 o'clock, but uh, it doesn't look like anybody's going anywhere. So now we have a wider berth between police and the crowd to the right. They're setting up fences over here. Uh, that uh, tear gas continues to kind of dissipate over in that direction a little bit. Uh, but look at the look at the sheer number Jerry, of people here. Jerry, can I ask here. you, I mean, have, have the I police mean, I, moved I, I, south of Colfax? Sure. They looks like they're they they're actually on the Capitol. They're kind of on the Capitol grounds now. The crowd is the crowd is applaud, you know, clapping. They're happy about something. They have their fence up. It looks like the police line has moved up. I would say about uh, 20 yards or so. So now they're off of Colfax and now they're on uh, the park and Capitol grounds here. So it looks like they may start to move forward uh, as uh, the eight o'clock uh, curfew looms here in a few minutes. Up oh, there's a there's there's a there's a firework there. So um, this is really something. This is really something. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull pull Austin away from this guy over here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kyle. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure that you guys are able to get out to the west if police move in and you, you yeah, guys are not it's, caught it's in between open. there. It's I just want to make sure you're able to go west. Are. Okay. Yeah, we can. Okay. I think if, All right. if it got pretty dicey where we're standing, we could probably have an exit point here. But here we are. Look how many police officers. If I had to estimate how many police officers are here, gosh, I you know I'm a journalism major, so I'm not very good at math, but I would imagine you know, there's several dozen police officers out here in a line with the Aurora Police Department and Denver Police Department. Again, no sign of the National Guard out here. No, no, uh, no National Guard. Looks like there's some SWAT guys up there on the hill, and then somebody's lighting fireworks over here behind the fence. But it uh, looks like the crowd got a hold of this fence, and they're doing something with this fence. It looks like, uh, wow, this is... Uh, this is gonna get. Uh, this is looks like it's gonna. Who knows what's gonna happen? You know, who knows what's gonna happen when this eight o'clock, when this eight o'clock number comes around. So we are precisely it, two minutes you know, from eight is... p.m. and the start of Denver's first citywide curfew in recent history. 
two minutes away, and one of the largest crowds in three nights of rioting has gathered on the front lawn of the state capitol and in Civic Center Park and on Lincoln, where they have built two successive barricades to face off with police. We didn't think anything was going to happen right at 8 p.m. sharp. There goes a firework in front of the police. I don't think anything is going to happen at 8 p.m. sharp, other than perhaps still hot, still hot. those hundreds, if not thousands of people who all have cell phones will know that it is 8 p.m. in Denver and that they are committing a crime simply by standing out there. And I'm guessing they will probably make some noise about that fact. It's one minute to eight in Denver, and this is a scene that this city has not previously seen. We have seen protests over the years between advocates for the homeless and law enforcement. We've seen protests of a political nature during the Democratic National Convention. There was the 1992 face-off between the KKK and counter-protesters at that very spot in front of the state capitol. Decades before, El Movimiento, between Chicano youth in Denver and police, days of running battles in the streets. But in terms of a situation like this, where we see protests across America over the death of a black man at the hands of a white police officer in Minneapolis, and now we have people in Denver building barricades in the street to face off with police at 8 p.m. tonight, this is something that Denver never before has seen. Denver Mayor Michael Hancock said that the curfew was not an empty threat, that it would be enforced, that the streets would be cleared. Well, here we are. It's 8 p.m. in Denver. The city is under curfew and rioters are in the streets. Let's go back down to Jeremy Hohola on the ground. Jeremy, does the crowd realize it's 8 o'clock? Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody's looking at their watch right now, Kyle, but I, I do think they got their alert uh, on, on their phone that you, uh, you talked about, indicating that the curfew would start at 8 o'clock. So uh, there are, I would have guessed, thousands of people here on the grounds. Uh, the, the crowd has kind of mobilized that fence you're talking about. Let's get a shot of this fence again. Austin, let's talk, uh, walk over here. We're in a safe spot, so if things get a little dicey, we can kind of jet away here in the next uh, you know, few minutes. But they organized this fence. Look, they even put the anchors of the fence uh, down so the fence stays up. So the crowd here uh, seems to be working uh, together to put up this barrier between police and uh, protesters. So now, Austin, if we pan from the crowd to police, we can see the distance between uh, police and the crowd. Right now it's eight o'clock. Um, I'm not hearing uh, any announcement. There might be an announcement uh, that they're saying right now. I, I think I hear something. Uh, but it's eight o'clock so far. I haven't seen the zip ties come out. I haven't seen uh, any sort of, you know, uh, indication that police are going to start making arrests. Um, so at this point, it looks like the, pro the, 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 the crowd here is just, you know, kind of like, you know, setting up this barricade. And we're here, you know, it's eight o'clock. This is it, and it's getting darker. Yeah. And there's still thousands, thousands of people here on the grounds here, and a lot of them are, are, are young people. Um, I was with a group of uh, demonstrators today that began at City Park, and uh, I, I, I walked with a, a civil rights activist today who had a message for the people who wanted to cause problems saying, you need to stay home. We need to, you know, you need to go home. Don't, please don't cause problems. Please don't, uh, you know, oh, do, you know, is. hurt Denver. You know, that was his message oh, no, no. today. But if we, if we look over here, uh, oh, oh, actually, we're gonna walk over here to the left. I think uh, my photographer, Austin, wants to come over here to the left. We're gonna walk over here and see if we can get a better shot and see what's going on over here. Let's walk over here, Austin. Oh, so, okay. Jeremy, just real quick, um, while you so guys continue to move, um, I, I, I'm not telling you any new information here because you've covered protests before. I'm mainly doing this for the benefit of the folks at home so that people know the crews that are the precautions our crews are taking. But, uh, but Steve and Noel and Jeremy, just remember, guys, two routes out at all times, two routes out. If you ever get down to one, get to a new spot where you have two ways out. Do not just be satisfied with one way out of the situation because that can close off on you. 
Let's go Noel Brennan a block south at 14th yeah. and Lincoln. Hey Kyle, we're at Lincoln and 14th. Just a minute ago, we saw some heavily armored vehicles, some SWAT vehicles from uh, police officers. They just pulled into the Capitol area and people here are now uh, fleeing, essentially. Um, sorry for the profanity, everyone. Um, if you'll remember where we were uh, last time we went live. There was a makeshift barrier uh, that people had, protesters had made from chain link fence. Uh, they'd use uh, road closure signs and pieces of wood, anything they could find to construct this barrier. They actually dismantled that, and Jeremy Hohola just talked about it a few minutes ago. They were taking those pieces of chain link fence and bringing it up towards uh, Colfax. Uh, to create a, a barrier in a different spot, but uh, let's let's walk this way, and I, I'll see if I can show you the uh, the police vehicle that that we're talking about. And I don't know if you can zoom up in there and, and show the headlights of that vehicle. That's what prompted this whole area to clear out just a, a minute before we went live. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, I got to point down uh, Lincoln one more time, where we've seen that row of officers. Uh, standing for quite some time. There used to be a bunch of protesters in the middle of the street. There are still some lingering there. Uh, those officers have held that stance for for a while now. Um, people have now crossed uh, 14th here, um, kind of waiting to see what happens. There was a moment of urgency where everyone was kind of fleeing this way. Uh, and we've got some gas deployed down Lincoln and people are coming toward us. They're, they're running through Civic Center Park right now. You can see the, the smoke Police the have forced uh, the, uh, the rioters uh, off of the Jeremy barricade Hall there in front of the Capitol. That was the area where the crowd was a moment ago. Wow, they pushed them back fast. That is a surprise to me that they got them off of that barricade that quickly. Holy cow. Th this, is, this is a surprise that that few officers pushed that many protesters off of a barricaded position in a matter of seconds. Yes. You guys are hot, Jeremy. How in the world did, did those police okay. move on that barricade so fast? They just walked right up to it and kicked it down. Uh, they even brought up, I mean, the, 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 the crowd here uh, even brought up concrete uh, towards the fence. So police are now pushing people away from the park. I'm going to pull my photographer, Austin. Let's go this way. Let's avoid this brick over here. Uh, we're going to walk over here. That way we can get to a better scene over here. But it's clear that police are starting to clear out the park and the, and the grounds over here. We're going to keep walking. <coughs> Gosh, you can really feel that, uh, that pepper spray. But police walked right up. Let's go ahead and turn back over here to this scene here. Uh, there might be some curse words you see here in the graffiti. That's not our intent. We apologize for that. Uh, the, the, some of the people in the crowd here, they actually took a lot of the brick that was stacked up here. I think there was some construction going on here and they brought it to the fence and you saw how quickly, Kyle, that uh, police just walked up to that fence and kicked it down. Uh, so that fence has been kicked down and so that barrier didn't really last, you know, long. It just, you know, they just kicked it down and now, now police have formed the line here. The line has moved from Colfax and now we can see the line has moved right to the west of the Capitol. Take a look at that. And now to the right, to the right over here, we've got uh, the crowd of, uh, of people here who continue uh, to be here on the grounds past the eight o'clock curfew. We're gonna walk up close. I'm looking to my back here to make sure we have an exit point. We do have an exit point, so we're okay. So, um, gosh, it's quite a scene here. I've never seen anything like this. Um, and I've never, I've never, Never seen anything like this. This is this is this is really something, and I think we're going to be talking about this for a very 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 long time. Uh, again, eight o'clock. It's beyond eight o'clock. So far, so far, no arrests. No arrests have been happening, uh, but police continue to like. Looks like they've established their line here. Uh, you can see people continue to kind of like. Here's this guy dressed in all yellow. I don't know what that's about. Um, it looks like some people actually came like quite prepared. You know, we we talked about this through the afternoon. You know, people brought you know their milk and their goggles and uh, and their gloves. So now now things are escalating as police kind of push that line south from Colfax towards the middle of the uh, Capitol grounds in the park here. And there's still a phenomenal amount of people here. It's milling about. Some of them are just observing. 
but then you got uh, other people that are uh, moving, moving closer to the uh, to the to the line of, uh, of police. So, so sorry so, about that vulgarity. So Jeremy, uh, uh, go ahead, Kyle. Jeremy, I know that. Uh, that, that you, like me, believe that uh, that levity works in all situations, and it just occurs to me with a smile that there you are wearing your New Mexico face mask while right ahead of us in the shot is that guy dressed like he's Walter White from Breaking Bad. Um, I I did not expect to see that outfit at the protest. Yeah, yeah. I I and I. You know that's it's it's I, I don't know what what the what the story is with this guy, but apparently he got some sort of outfit here, uh, you know, that he's wearing. Uh, yeah, uh, this was the only mask I had available. So yeah, so here we are. It's you know what time is it, Kyle? We're I'm going to look at my clock here. We're eight minutes beyond eight o'clock. Uh, it's eight oh eight. You see you see some people here, continued walking up closer to the line, uh, and now. Now the line is just west of the Capitol, right here uh, along this line. So it looks like people are no longer at Colfax and Lincoln. The line here has moved down to the west of the Capitol. So again, uh, we're live on TV. We want to be careful about any vulgarities that go over our air. That's just a disclaimer for people watching at home. It looks like the crowd, if, I, if I'm going to take a guess here, it looks like the crowd may have thinned out a little bit. Um, I think maybe people got got um, got noticed about the whoa that guy just threw something. Um, I think people got noticed at the eight o'clock curfew happened, and I feel that Jeremy, feel you don't want to be standing next to that guy that just threw something. Get away from that guy that just threw something. Yeah, we're we're he's he's he he took off. I think we're we're far back enough now where I feel we're in an okay area. Um, so it looks like the crowd may have thinned out. I'm not sure. We're, we're kind of under the trees here. I don't know if you can still see our shot. It's a little bit dark, but um, wow, it's really something. It's really something walking through yeah. this. All right, Jeremy, you, this you, play out. you hang in there. I want to get to our Chris Vanderveen, who is also down there giving us fresh okay. perspective on the situation. Uh, Chris, where are you and what are you seeing? Kyle, I'm right near, near the intersection of Colfax and Broadway. And we're just to the north of where Jeremy has been. And so there's a little less activity right here. But this is a vantage point where you get a pretty good idea of the tactics that are being used by the police department. And I'm going to have Foster kind of, I'm going to kind of walk over this way. I know it's starting to get a little low light. All of those cop cars that you see right over there are on Colfax. And essentially what the police department has been doing has been using a line of police officers. And every once in a while, they'll advance a little further. These are fairly common uh, crowd techniques that are used by police departments in these type of situations. And it's been fairly effective in keeping people away from this particular area. So again, you're seeing a heavy, heavy police presence. They announced on a speaker probably about, I don't know, maybe about five minutes ago, that people who remain in the area will face the possibility of arrest. And they've been telling people that for about the last, uh, about, about the last five or 10 minutes. What's interesting, Kyle, is that I just got here not too long ago and driving up here, it sort of took on the tone for some people of like attending a sporting event where people were showing up very interested to see what was going on. They knew that curfew was getting extremely close and they just wanted to see this. There's a lot of people that are just kind of looky loose. They want to see what's going on down here. They mean no harm. They just want to see this police presence. But what you're seeing right now is the police department actively retaking ground here in Civic Center Park, and they're using a fairly strong show of force. We're in an area, obviously, where they're not using the tear gas, but they're using people and they're advancing one by one by one as that time goes along. So give you a better idea where we're at. Right over here on that side of me right now, that is the state capitol. Right behind me is this line of police officers. So let's walk, let's walk a little bit this way, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here you have a number of, uh, of police officers. And essentially, you don't have a lot of people in this area. And it's become a fairly effective crowd technique. The bulk of the crowd is over there to the south of my location, closer to the federal courthouse. That's where the bulk of people ran when Jeremy uh, was in the middle of all that. That's where they've since gone. So we're in this area right now and sort of taking a look. But I want to point out, because you're going to be able to see this in the light right now, it's a lot of cop cars. 
the police presence has markedly gone up just within the last 15 minutes. So we knew that something would happen when this curfew went into effect at eight o'clock. And this is what you're seeing. The police department is actively moving uh, into areas where people had been throughout the day and they're retaking that ground. Kyle, back to you. So Chris, what strikes me when you give us that vantage point and say, well, why is it different on that side versus, versus the other side where Jeremy Hola was? These crowds, you know this, you've covered these protests, these crowds tend to self-select based on the level of risk that protesters want to take. And Thank then when, when, when violence starts and it turns into what you could describe as a riot, again, they self-select into groups of people who want to take various levels of risk. It's almost like a rec center basketball games. You got your real serious players, and then you got some people who just kind of want to shoot around. And it looks to me like the serious players were lined up at the barricade and the folks who are happy to walk back with an advancing police line in front of yep. them. They have a different mentality. They may be there for a different reason. That's an excellent observation, Kyle. And what you're seeing right now, again, is the advance of the police department. Just had a female police officer come up to me and tell me, please and please move, said thank you when we moved. It was very cordial at the time. But this is what you're seeing, and I want to, uh, want to pan right over in this area. This is what you're seeing right now in this portion of Civic Center Park. You're seeing police officers armed with less lethal, less than lethal uh, options, and they're advancing on the park. So they're telling us to move. Thank you, guys. So um, we're just going to keep moving, and uh, we're going to walk over this way. What I don't want to do, Kyle, is sort of get back in that large crowd. I think we're in a good location right now. Uh, so that's where we're at right now with a smaller crowd. Back to you. Yeah. I mean, th that's how you want to see things resolved, because those folks are out there. Their very presence makes a statement. Police are making a statement saying, you're going home, let's go, they're walking back. Nobody, uh, either somebody who is out there to make a statement or an officer is gonna get hurt in that kind of situation. They're just walking people back. That's, that's what you want to see. I have to say, if you had asked me 15 minutes into Denver's curfew, would Denver police and other law enforcement have moved that quickly and that aggressively, I would have told you no. Never in a million years did I think they were just gonna, gonna unleash the tear gas, walk up and kick down that barricade and that, and that the people who were out there, that crowd was just gonna fold like that. I, I did not see that coming. I thought that they were gonna make a stand there. Uh, that's what we've seen in other protests in other cities. Back to Steve Steger. Steve, you're in a safe place. Tell us where it is and what's happening. Well, so I am on Broadway between Lincoln and Colfax. We're closer to Lincoln now because police are very quickly advancing this line backwards. Uh, what's interesting was about maybe three minutes ago, it was like a switch flipped and a whole bunch of people just decided maybe this isn't worth it. Uh, but it was in those moments that you had people here in the back of the crowd running up and saying, hold the line, hold the line, trying to keep people in front of these police officers. At one point, I also heard, as now they're yelling, take a knee, trying to get the folks who are in front of these police officers to take a knee in front of them. One of the, one of the things that uh, was interesting to me uh, was as I was standing here, uh, a gentleman ran by and said, grab the Molotovs, grab the Molotovs. Now, I, I didn't see him with anything in his hands, but you heard the mayor talking about those elements earlier. And Taylor, we should probably start moving back a little bit because this line, this line, line this line is advancing. This line is advancing a bit. I did hear someone just a few minutes ago say that, uh, which would go hand in hand with what the what the mayor was talking about. Right here is someone with a hockey stick, uh, Kyle, and they're slowly moving back. That we're all violent right now. That's what I, I well, You're talking Molotov cocktail. We're going we're gonna to wrap, and I'll toss it back okay, to you, Kyle. have you seen a Molotov cocktail? That's all he said. All right, well, shut the fuck up. Okay. All right, Steve. All right, yep. We're going to step away from Steve there and, uh, and allow them to de-escalate that situation. Uh, that was a gentleman in the foreground explaining uh, that they are nonviolent uh, with someone in the background holding a hockey stick. Uh, so there's that for you. Uh, let's go back to Chris Vanderveen, who again was along another one of these moving lines. Chris, police are moving people to where? Yeah, they're, 
to anywhere where they're not right now. And essentially that's what's been happening Fuck over the last 15 Fuck minutes. 12. Sorry about that. Uh, you guys, you guys would notice throughout the night, there's gonna be some people that are gonna, gonna yell on the camera. But what's interesting, what I, what I wanna show you what's going on here is that now you get a really good look at the Capitol that's just to the east of us. We're essentially, essentially right in between the city and county building and the Capitol. And that line of police officers is essentially what Denver police wants to see right now. This is not a large crowd of people here. This is an area where there are still some people out here. This is a manageable crowd for the Denver Police Department. This is what they want to see. It's also peaceful where we are right now. You have a number of protesters that are talking to the police department. They may be saying various things, but this is what they this is what the police department has been efforting in this park for the last 15 minutes. Get smaller groups of people They'll move every so often, and you'll see it. And they'll, they'll tell those people that are talking directly to them every once in a while, they'll tell those people to move back, and that's what happens. So that's what we're seeing in this section of the park. This is not the park where, part of the park where Jeremy's been throughout the night. You're not seeing a lot of activity here, but it's a relatively safe place for to be for us and for the officers right now. There's not a lot of agitation here. There's not a lot of anger. I've talked to a number of people just within the last 10 minutes. As I said, why are you here? I talked to him individually, he said, because Black Lives Matter. That's what he said. I go, how long do you plan on staying here? He goes, I don't know. But he did, this, this is not a very agitated crowd right here. This is on the periphery. This is what you see on the periphery right now, not in that main group of people. Back to you, Kyle. Yeah, it's such a striking difference, Chris, the, the, the crowd of people that you're with versus the folks who were throwing rocks and throwing bottles and were chucking tear gas canisters back and building barricades. Um, and, and clearly, you know, the, the crowd is not monolithic. No crowd of people is ever monolithic. And uh, it's good to know that there exists a safe option for people who are looking for a safe option. We'll get back to you, Chris, in just a moment. I believe that Noel Brennan right, I mean, is ready he, to rejoin us. Uh, yeah. Noel chronicled for us. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Chris, uh, you, go, go, right. go ahead, Chris. No, can't, you, can't, I, I know you wanna to go to Noel, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you go to Noel. I know we're in a, bit, a little bit of delay, so it makes audio a bit challenging, but go ahead and go to Noel. If we have any updates, we'll get back to you. Okay, all right, thank you, Chris. Yep, we and, are on a bit of a delay here, thank you. Um, and, so, Noel Brennan showed us and, the building way, of the way. barricades, uh, first at 13th and Lincoln, and then that barricade was taken and apart, and pieces of it uh, were moved up to 14th and, and Lincoln, where it was built fairly large, and then it was drive. moved up north of there. That's where protesters said they were going to make their stand, and were quickly overrun by police. Uh, Noel, uh, you're back now where police are advancing and tear gas <laughs> yep. being fired. Where is this? Yeah, we kind of got caught in a bad spot. We're at 14th and Broadway. Uh, they are spraying pepper spray. They're firing bullets, uh, pepper bullets at people. Um, we're just going to keep backing up a little bit. So now we're walking down Broadway, Kyle. This is kind of a choke point where officers were coming down 14th and Broadway. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, uh, kind of forcing protesters now down Broadway. Uh, we were right up against the line of officers, um, saw them spray, pepper spray, and also fire some pepper balls. Um, <clears throat> we're seeing protesters now throwing uh, water bottles um, and just about anything they can back at police who are still walking uh, toward us down Broadway. And, and let's show <coughs> the crowd of people that are still in the middle of the street uh, officers, Kyle, are just simply pushing people back. And so we're walking with them at this point. <clears throat> it just gives folks an idea of oh the God. fact that we have different groups of people uh, who are more or less willing to get into it with police here. Uh, our Jeremy Hohola uh, has done a lot of reporting over the Denver, Publi uh, the Denver Public Library over the years, but nothing quite like this uh, in which we have riot police yeah. facing off with a crowd there. Jeremy. Okay, um, we're standing right in front of the library where the crowd has been pushed back to. Oh, looks like people are breaking the windows here in the library. I got a 
I got a pretty good whiff of <coughs> that tear gas. Looks like people, uh, somebody broke the window of the library there, but the crowd is uh, moving back. We're gonna move back with the crowd here. Um, this is the Denver Public Library. We're walking down right now. There's still a phenomenal amount of people out here. You, you can hear somebody saying, break the windows. That's, 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 not, that's not good. Um, boy, that tear gas is really something. Wow, this is really something. From what I can see through my, my kind of now diminished eyesight a little bit is that the crowd is now moving south. Um, on Bro is this Broadway? This is Broadway. Yeah, we're on Broadway now. The crowd is now moving south. We're on 13th Street, and uh, and now uh, now we're walking towards uh, 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 you know down Broadway. I, I think I don't know what the plan is here, Kyle. I mean I I, I don't know what the police department's plan is uh, to you know to to, dis to disperse the crowd. I mean where does the crowd disperse uh, to? I mean they're staying on the street. Uh, they, they've overtaken Broadway at this point, and now we're at uh, 13th and Broadway, and there's just still a phenomenal amount of people uh, walking around here. Um, again, you know, we're well past the 8 o'clock curfew. Uh, doesn't look like anybody's going home at this point just yet. Um, I don't know if I'm still alive. I'm going to keep talking if I'm still alive. Uh, to the right, we can see uh, the museum. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it back to you, Kyle. It looks like uh, the crowd is now moving south on Broadway. No, I appreciate all those observations, Jeremy. You were still live. I always talk like you're live. Uh, so there we have the situation where police continue to move the crowd. And as we talked about with Chris Vanderbeen and as Jeremy was just questioning aloud, moving them to where? They're moving them south. Um, now... What we saw during the 2008 Democratic National Convention protests on the one night that things really got popping, it was more of an afternoon, really, uh, police moved a crowd like this and eventually backed them into another line of officers. And then they started making arrests. I still think, based on our aerial views, that there is a one-to-one, -one, if not better, ratio between protesters and police. So the idea that, that they're going to back these folks into another line and then break out the zip ties, that does not seem like a realistic scenario. But clearly, Denver police tactically have made a decision about where they would like to have people versus where they would not like to have people, and they're moving them in that direction. They're moving them away from the downtown business core. They've moved them away from the 16th Street Mall, uh, and they continue to move them south uh, on Lincoln, uh, and eventually uh, we're going to uh, get down to uh, a number of various uh, choke points along Cherry Creek and the bridges along Cherry Creek by Spear, but obviously folks have plenty of opportunities to take side streets in any direction since then. But if we're thinking about in which direction are things being moved and where will it eventually end up, that's where it'll eventually end up. This is the first time that we've seen cars going through protesters uh, tonight. That's something that's been avoided because police finally shut down the streets. That was a, a mind-baffling thing that we saw last night where even as rocks were being thrown and bottles were being thrown and, and tear gas was being fired and we had dumpsters ablaze downtown, police were still allowing traffic just, just to drive through town. Just cars were just trucking right through the middle of the protests. And it was, it was really something to behold. Let's get back to Chris Vanderbeen, who we lost saw at a pretty placid scene there in the park. Here we are 26 minutes after curfew, and we had police and other folks just hanging out. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We're, so just to give you a perspective, we're off uh, 13th right now. Uh, behind me right now is the amphitheater where there, there's been a number of activities throughout the week that have been taking place here with the park at Civic Center Park. Behind me is the Art Museum. And what you've seen now, and again, I think it's important to give you this perspective. We're not in the middle of this right now, but we're only about a block away from there's still a lot of people. So here's police department coming down right now. Um, you're starting to see some people, and I hesitate to give sort of broad generalizations right now at a moment like this, but you're starting to see some people go this way. This is people that are going off to the south, and they're le they appear to be leaving the area. That's it's not a bad thing. That's what the city wanted to see. And so, and, and, and it wasn't that long ago that that section was filled with probably about know, a few dozen people. Um, now we're talking about a dozen or so. And that's what's been happening. This advance from the Denver Police Department over the last 15, 30 minutes, coming from Colfax, 
You good? Yeah, yeah. Just making sure. <laughs> Just making sure. So I, I always got to keep on keeping an eye on my photographer too. So basically what you've been seeing is this advance going south from the Denver Police Department. They went in heavy by the Capitol and they went in a little softer by Civic Center Park. And that's the area that we're at right now. And so it's a much more calm area over here, but they, so they didn't use those tactics that you saw with Jeremy. They didn't use smoke where they had, they just had a number of police because they had the numbers in that area to be able to do that. And so what you see right now, not too far from the area is a fairly calm situation. It may not be the case in a, about a block or so of, from here, but right here, it's calm. Kyle? Chris, I want to ask for your perspective as somebody who has worked as a journalist in town for a long time on what we saw earlier today that I'm having trouble making sense of. We knew that 8 o'clock was the shutdown time, the curfew time. The mayor and the city had talked at length about how much they encouraged peaceful protest and gathering and so on and so forth. Police moved on people with tear gas in the area of Civic Center Station and on the lawn of the Capitol in the five o'clock hour in an area where people had been assembled seemingly with the blessing of the city just an hour before. And I can't figure out why that happened, nor can I remember that happening in the past where all of a sudden the switch is arbitrarily flipped by police of you're okay to be here to here comes the tear gas. Yeah, and I think what you gotta know is what was happening within that crowd that maybe potentially made, I'm gonna take this mask off for a second because I'm not around anybody. You gotta ask yourself, around that area, what was taking place, uh, excuse me for a second, I might take this back on. Oh, what was taking place in that area that was causing the police department to become agitated? And that's what clearly, what it's over in that area where that was taking place, and I don't know, I can't say. Clearly, there was less patience tonight than there was not that long ago. But again, you know, at eight o'clock they did that same advance and it moved people fairly quickly. Now you're looking over the area of the Capitol, there's essentially nobody over there. Kyle. All right. Chris, thank you very much. We need to get over to where Steve Steger is standing by, where uh, there was a <coughs> fire now extinguished. Is this 13th and Lincoln, Steve? Right at the corner of 13th and Lincoln, Kyle, uh, kind of tucked away. Uh, behind, and uh, forgive me, because I don't actually know, oh, it's the Denver Public Library, I should have known that. We're tucked right behind the Denver Public Library where that line of officers has moved down Lincoln Avenue and is now stationed right here, just north of 13th, and just kind of standing still and ready to go. That when they moved through, they did fire some tear gas. I'm feeling the remnants of that right now. Uh, they threw some tear gas canisters uh, and fired what appears to be some pepper, uh, those little pepper balls at some of the folks who were here who had gathered. They kind of took the in-between area between uh, the art museum complex and the Denver Public Library and worked out here. But it's interesting because we're watching this line of police officers right now and what was a large crowd of people that's now dispersed down Lincoln and what you're looking at right now is those officers appear to be stopped because traffic is passing by. Many of these people who are driving by in support of the protest and honking loudly as the officers make their way. But if you could see down that line uh, how effective this is, almost immediately uh, when we got here, that group that had been stationed right at 13th and Lincoln just dispersed and moved further down. I don't. I, I, I can't get a good look, and frankly, I don't want to wander too far in front of these officers who have formed a line to see uh, if they've moved further down Lincoln or if they're there, but it's a pretty remarkable scene, Kyle. Yeah. Hang tight, Steve. You stay safe. That is a significant contingent of law enforcement right there. Let's go to Noel Brennan, who's moving with the crowd. Noel. A broken window when people have been fucking murdered. Hey, Kyle, sorry. I'm going to toss it back to you. There's a guy up in my face. Sorry. Yep, 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 yep. We'll take it back. It's fine. Yep, no problem. Noel's been down in that area where uh, a number of people in the crowd have started uh, breaking windows. Can, yep, okay. Uh, he's been down in an area where people have started to uh, damage some property, and it sounded like that, that gentleman who was speaking to him did not want the news to bring attention to the fact that they are currently uh, destroying property 
in that area. So let's take a step back now. We are 30 minutes into Denver's first citywide curfew in recent memory. The mayor promised that it would be enforced, that it was not simply a symbol. And in fact, shortly after 8 o'clock, police moved strongly. Now, we should say they moved earlier than they ever have today. Earlier than Friday, earlier than Thursday. 4 o'clock, there was tear gas that was used near the DPD District 6 headquarters at Colfax and Washington. There was tear gas used next to Civic Center Station, the bus terminal across from the Capitol during the 5 o'clock hour. And there was tear gas being thrown at people up on the Capitol lawn where peaceful protests had been going on not long before, apparently with the sanction of the city. So the police response tonight started early. It started aggressively. The standoff happened at 8, and they swept through and kicked down that barricade that was made on Lincoln in front of the Capitol and started running people south. Here, yep, as Steve said, it appears that they have stopped. I'm quite certain that that's the Denver Public Library main branch in the foreground uh, as we look south on Lincoln. Um, and you've got a line of police that have stopped so that they can let traffic through, and then they're going to go from there. Um, yes, that indeed was the public library there on the left side of the screen. You can see the, the history museum, uh, and the crowd has been pushed down in that area. That intersection that you're looking at right behind that building, that's where Arnold Brennan is. That's where he was going to show us some of the property damage that was going on uh, when that man decided to get in his face to prevent us from uh, bringing you those pictures. Now looking just south of the Capitol where some Denver firefighters are going to be putting out a dumpster fire, the motto and emblem of 2020 as a year. Uh, that's in front of what I believe is the old uh, Masonic, Masonic building. It's either that or right across the street. But anyway, uh, we're, on, we're on that south side of the Capitol building near where that government services uh, office is as well. Earlier tonight, Jeremy Hohola was, uh, he was with some of the folks who are really looking to confront police. Ooh, what is that fire burning? We need a closer look at that. Um, that appears to, again, perhaps be a dumpster. That's in an alley. Uh, that's in an alley in an area of town there where you have some uh, apartments on apartments or condos on the west side of the street. I'm quite sure that this is behind Grant. Uh, and then on the east side of Grant, uh, you've got, um, I think that's where the Tokyo Joe's is and that kind of thing, if you've got an idea of where this is in town. And this, again, uh, appears to be a dumpster or something similar uh, that has been set on fire. This reminds me that in Minneapolis, which has, has dealt with far more serious street protests and riots than we've seen over the last week. The city put out an advisory to citizens tonight trying to encourage them to, to fireproof their properties, to think about what could be set on fire on their properties and to perhaps douse the contents of dumpsters with water and things like that. Um, that is not something that the city of Denver has talked about. We do know that a lot of the vandalism has first been directed at public buildings, at symbols of government power, at the state capitol in particular. Last night, we saw a turn toward vandalism of private property, the old Denver Post building, which I guess if I'm being correct, I think the old Denver Post building has been totally taken over by government now. So I guess that's a government building now, too. But anyway, uh, but smash windows there, smash windows on the 16th Street Mall, stores cleaned out of merchandise uh, in that part of town. Perhaps that, that's why police made their east-west line at Colfax and decided to push protesters south away from the business core. Certainly have been wrong before, but my guess is that we're going to see a lot of this kind of thing through the evening because this is low lift for people who want to start trouble, lighting a dumpster on fire. You step away from the, the crowd of people, you step away from police, and you light something on fire in a dumpster. There you go. Um, and I, I wonder if they're going to be dealing with these literal hot spots throughout the night. Noel Brennan has extricated himself from the man who did not want us showing what was going on in his location. Noel, glad that you're safe. What are you seeing? Yeah, vast majority of people have been very friendly, Kyle. Uh, Broadway and 12th, that's where we're at right now. And people have basically just taken over the intersection right here. The crazy thing is there are still cars uh, that have been driving down south on Broadway. 
even though police have been the advancing slowly. Nice. So if I step out of the way, you can see way down there, uh, just a block away, police are slowly walking towards us. You can see the flashing red and blue lights behind them. Uh, they have pushed everyone back this far um, and given people some time to disperse, but there's this group here that is choosing to stay at this point at, at 12th and Broadway. Uh, so we're just anticipating the conflict that's going to happen in just a, a, a minute or so. Um, sorry, guys. Um, we need to. People are throwing yep. water bottles as, at the approaching cars uh, and Denver police. Um, they're getting pretty close right now. Some people are walking. Some people are walking either direction down 12th Kyle to get away, but there are people that are standing their ground. Uh, we're going to move to a safer location, yep. Kyle. Yep, sounds good, Noel. Remember, always two ways out, two ways out of every situation, because one will close off on you in a second. So we've got the dumpster fire at 13th and Grant and in America generally these days. We've got the crowds of people that are being pushed southward uh, down Broadway. We had another, uh, I'd say, more, more uh, collegial dispersion of people that was pushing west from Civic Center Park and over. Uh, one more time to our producer, Erica, about who's ready to go. I missed that because I was talking too loud. Steve Steger is ready to go. There you're looking at the original Quiznos in the foreground, uh, not far from that great mural of Robin Williams. It makes me smile every time I pass it. So that's what part Stand by. you're looking at there from Sky 9. Steve Dark. Steger, where are you and what has changed in, in your area in the last 15 minutes? So we haven't moved much from where we were, Kyle. We're still uh, on 13th, uh, just now north of, or just now south of Lincoln, I should say, uh, the police have advanced. The, that area between the art museum and the art hotel here, uh, the police have started advancing on some protesters who were hiding out in there. They're moving in on them. Uh, they, they pushed all the way uh, basically from Civic Center Park through this, I don't want to call it, it's a walkway. I don't want to call it an alley. It's more of a public walkway. Uh, but now you see Denver police vehicles uh, driving down that area as they continue to push people out of here. There was a frantic moment there for a second. Uh, we needed to kind of flash our, to flash our cameras at the officers as they were making their way through because they're just trying to make sure uh, that everyone in the area should be there. And now we're getting a look at another uh, police vehicle that's making its way down that little walkway. We're going to try to head that way safely, Kyle. We'll uh, get back in touch with you in a minute. Absolutely. Uh, and there you see uh, in the foreground a, a journalist from another station. Lots of folks out there working hard for a lot of different media outlets to give people an eye of what is happening in their city on the third night of protests turned riots in Denver, Colorado. That is a pretty sizable crowd of people that has again gathered and is on the move in the city, and we will keep an eye on them. Uh, Noel Brennan uh, joins us uh, reporting live from the mascot of 2020, the dumpster fire. Yeah, Kyle, it looks like we have now three dumpster fires that are going right now. We're at 12th and Broadway. Um, we're actually on, on 12th, uh, right behind some restaurants here. These protesters have just set these aflame in the last couple of minutes, just as Denver police have started marching uh, to this intersection. Um, we've got one decently sized dumpster fire. The others are, are kind of smoldering at this point. I know we've seen these uh, the past couple of nights, uh, but just goes to show how, how, how quickly these can be set and how quickly they go up. Um, let's take a look down uh, 12th here. You can see the officers now are congregating in the middle of the intersection. They have, uh, oh, we got to get out of the way. We got to get out of the way. As Denver police driving through here. We're going to take you back to the intersection here. Um, effectively cleared this out, Kyle. We're going to go try to find out where uh, the protesters have been pushed to. Um, that happened so quickly. Just about 30 seconds, everyone's out of there. Yeah. Oh, I think that I just think that we could see that through the night um, just because it's it's 
you know, it's fairly low risk activity for somebody who wants to cause some trouble is to set something uh, on fire. Uh, we continue to watch as groups mass up again and start to gain some number as the general state of action has been pushed from the Capitol and Civic Center Park, where it festered for a couple of days with a decent amount of damage to uh, the Capitol. Uh, smashed windows, smashed up cars, uh, graffiti, so on and so forth, uh, and has been pushed south. Uh, would note, this is being pushed into an area where people live, all right? Um, so there are, there are people now, not so much before when it was right outside the Capitol and kind of sandwiched between a bunch of government buildings, but now we're getting into a part of town where people are going to be able to look out their windows and see this, uh, which is only to say that it's just, it's, more people who are in proximity to this and and anybody's goal should be for everybody to leave here safe tonight all of the people who are in the streets all of the police officers and all of the people who are uh living nearby just mentioning that this is now moving in the direction of additional people in denver and again we have traffic moving and that's the other thing too and maybe this is just a dumb observation of somebody who's a fairly new dad. But my concern is always that some kid is going to step out backwards into traffic because their eyes are on something else in the protest and they're going to get hit by a truck. Um, and uh, in a way, it was kind of nice when things were on streets that were at least clear of vehicles. So that was one less thing for everybody out there to worry about. Back to our Chris Vanderveen on the ground uh, for perspective on what you're seeing. Chris, you were on the move last we talked. Where'd you end up? Kyle, I, I wanted to give you that this really interesting juxtaposition of what's going on right now. We're right in front of the Capitol. This is where people have been throughout the day. It is essentially deserted right now. I'm going to walk on Lincoln here. You're seeing a lot of police activity. And I'm going to foster you can follow me. Um, look at this area right now. This is an area that uh, not that long ago, before the curfew, was filled with hundreds and hundreds of people. And, and now we're sort of walking on this deserted street. It's a very surreal experience. Every once in a while, you'll get a, a whiff of some of the gas that's in the air. It gives you an idea there's a lot of gas right now. But we're, we're about two, two and a half blocks from the action, and this is what you see right now. There's nothing going on. I'm in the middle of Lincoln and 14th, just to the south and west of the Capitol. This direction you go down there, that's the courthouse that was vandalized last night. A lot of activity there last night. No one around that area. You start looking down this way on 13th, no one down that area. Where the activity is, is where everybody, the police department was pushing people this way. And essentially what happened was, is that everyone got pushed over in this direction. And you're gonna to start to hear some activity over in this direction. This is where the police department is. We've seen a number of units and vans. And other, uh, and other SWAT teams that have been going in and out of the area very, very quickly. Seems like they're tuned to what's going on. Obviously, Kyle, you know that ever since the police department blocked scanner traffic, encrypted the scanner traffic, we can't hear that. Crowds can't hear it. So everything that's taking place right now, the communication is all taking place in private. Perhaps in a situation like this, that's a good thing for the police department. But again, this is where the activity is. Behind us, they've pushed everybody to the south. And what they've done is, by pushing everybody to, from the south towards the south, they've been pushing people away from downtown and in that direction. And I just noticed and I asked um, the control room for a weather report because we're starting to see a lot of uh, lightning off in the area. And I was told by Becca Ditchfield that we're probably good for now. So I think we're good for now. And uh, I'm going to throw it back to you, but we're going to kind of continue to walk this way where there's more activity. But right now, you would think where this is a dead night in Denver, Colorado. Nothing taking place. Two blocks that way, that's where the problems are. Back to you. It's striking perspective to see the Capitol grounds empty when less than an hour ago, that was the flashpoint of the confrontation in Denver. And I also have to think, as Chris walked through that intersection, 
what the folks in those buildings Monday through Friday are currently dealing with. Because we, ha we have this whole other thing going on. We have this whole other pandemic going on, an economic crisis going on. We have history in the making. So there you have inside the Capitol, legislators frantically trying to figure out how to cut $3 billion out of a budget that doesn't have the wiggle room. You've got the folks at the judicial system, the state Supreme Court, that soon will get a new challenge to the governor's executive power. And what can he do during a pandemic? You have the folks at History Colorado collecting the stories of Coloradans during the economic collapse and the pandemic. And then history gets moved right across their front porch again tonight as we watch this protest. Noel Brennan on dumpster fire duty. Noel. Yes, sir. Just as quickly as those dumpsters went up in the flames, Denver Fire was out here just a matter of minutes. And you're watching the end of them extinguishing the fire in the the dumpster that probably was the, the biggest uh, fire that we saw just a few minutes ago. But speaking to what the Capitol looks like now, where people just cleared out, I can tell you just from the experience of standing here at 12th and Broadway, where there was a huge group of, of protesters just a few minutes ago, and it seemed like I started my live shot with a whole bunch of people, and then all of a sudden everyone had scattered uh, further south. Um, so. We don't really know at this point from our vantage point where the, the big contingent of, of protesters ran off to, uh, but you can see that there are still police vehicles that are driving down 12th uh, with uh, officers hanging on the sides uh, of the vehicles that we've, images that we've seen the past two nights um, in, in Denver. So Kyle, we're gonna take a walk, see if we can find where the, the big mass of protesters went to, if that still exists at that point, at this point, or if they all just kind of scattered in different directions. But dumpster fires taken care of very quickly by Denver Fire. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go south, young man. Go south. Uh, that's where they have headed. They are on the move south. Uh, all roads uh, lead to the south into the area. Um, if, if folks are familiar with down around like the the Trader Joe's and the, uh, the the governor's mansion down that way. Um, uh, Low Down Brewery, I think that's my first brewery reference in three days of rioting, so you can give me that. Um, so that's the area where the protests are now moving into. As you talk about both uh, Chris and Noel talking about how striking it is for an area to be at the center of that action between the crowds and police with, with tear gas and with things being thrown and with vandalism. And then in a moment it's gone uh, when it was so stationary or at least so focused largely for days there in the area of the Capitol and Civic Center. This is the heads up for the folks who live along Broadway, Lincoln, Grant, Logan, those areas as you get down to the area just north of Spear. This is what's coming in your direction. So if you're watching, thinking, oh, that protest, you know, 12 blocks up, man, that's been wild for a couple of days. Uh, you're about to get a look out your window. Um, so just know that it's coming your way, and we'll do our best to give descriptors of protests, uh, or, of the direction of protesters uh, when we have them. That's an interesting scene there where it looks like police are just kind of following behind them as they go south. Oh, Sky9 is going to give us the big time view here. This is nice. This kind of gives you a better idea of where we are. Um, and looking at the, the city at, at, at night and you're looking south uh, right now, uh, there's Spear and, uh, and Cherry Creek uh, there on the, uh, on the right side of your image. Remind me one more time who we're talking to next. All right, we're going to Steve Steger. I've got a chronic problem where I can't listen and talk at the same time. It's a listen for all American males, Steve, so you and I can both learn it tonight. Less talking, more listening. I want to listen to you now about what you are seeing outside of Very Quiet Capital. So I, I, I was going to say, we are at the corner of Broadway and 14th right now, and it is dead quiet compared to what it has been the last few days. This is just something right now to take in. Uh, we're here switching out some of our gear to get some more uh, capabilities uh, right now so that we can continue to bring things to you. Uh, but I wanted to show you this, Kyle. So yesterday we showed you this, and I got in a little trouble on Twitter because I called it a rubber bullet. Denver police call this a 40 millimeter uh, foam projectile. Uh, I, I did some research because I went down a rabbit hole last night. It's also called a sponge grenade, colloquially. Uh, it is a less than lethal force that they use. As I was walking down Lincoln Avenue, 
uh, right where those police officers made their way through not long ago, I found a whole bunch of these, uh, which appears to be the shelf for it. Uh, so there is a lot of this in the middle of the roadway right now where those officers just made their way through and kind of dispersed the crowd maybe half an hour ago uh, at Lincoln and 13th, uh, right next to the Denver Library. Uh, very few people out here right now. Uh, as Chris Vanderveen was talking about a short time ago, it's a relatively eerie scene. I, I can't remember in my time as a reporter here seeing it this quiet out here. Uh, obviously, you have a heavy police presence kind of keeping things quiet, but it's this is always a bustling part of the city. It doesn't really matter what time you're rolling through here. Uh, there are always a lot of people around here and it's stark and it's quiet and very interesting, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, very quiet there. And at the same time, I think there are folks that are concerned. I mean, I've been talking to folks on social media tonight um, about the path of the protests and, and Ms. Ms. W was telling me two friends in the area where the protests headed, they know that's coming and they're concerned. And, and, and Kelsey said similarly, they're headed towards me. What's the plan? They're pushing these people into a residential area. I think, Steve, it seems like the plan is the more they can keep people on the move, the less damage they can do. And people walking through town is just people walking through town, you know? That, yeah, that's absolutely it. And you got to think about it too. When they were out here, there's a lot of space out here right now where we're standing a lot of room for a big crowd to gather but the more you get into the neighborhoods that that space tends to disappear uh it's no secret that in capitol hill it's awfully hard to find a parking spot so there are an awful lot of cars also a lot of things in that neighborhood so i imagine that that gives them a little bit of of an advantage of, of spacing the protesters out a little bit uh to try to to try to calm that that protest right now obviously they can't be too happy about being moved out of civic center park Steve, thank you very much. Take a breather, man. You know, you, he's been in it for two nights. I don't know how many times you've gotten tear gas, you and photojournalist uh, Taylor Schuss together, uh, you know, but take a second, guys. Breathe some fresh air. You both have done fantastic work, and I know a lot of people have passed along their appreciation on social media through me to you, so I hope you hear it. Uh, take a breather. Ah, there we go. Another one of America's finest citizens with a display of intellectual prowess. Um, thanks, Steve. We'll talk to you again in just a moment. This is some of the damage from last night to commercial businesses in that downtown core, the core that police kept the crowds from reaching earlier tonight. We are in a situation now, uh, knock on wood, that um, if no more significant damage is done to property, to people's livelihoods, I mean, you smash up a store, you're affecting somebody's livelihood. Um, that we could have a situation where this night, the night of the great confrontation, results in less damage than last night. Last night, stuff got wild between 10 and midnight. Police Chief Paul Pazin talked about that. Don't allow these individual agitators to hijack your message. Don't allow them to scar this beautiful city that the people of Denver have built. Attempting to capitalize on this tragic killing of Mr. George Floyd to cause widespread damage in our city is nearly as inexcusable as the horrific killing itself. The damage to our businesses, to our city and state building, and our community is something that we all should not stand for. That was Police Chief Paul Pazin earlier today. Just learned from our Jennifer Meckles, who has been keeping track of the activities of the National Guard in this pretty city tonight, that they are not making arrests. The National Guard will not be making arrests. If you've been with us earlier in the evening, this is something that, that we speculated about earlier, just because the fact that they were only sending 100 troops and they're spread out at nine different locations. Um, they weren't just going to kind of glom them on to police units in order to make arrests. They're more likely doing different type of uh, logistical actions or site protection. I think we have Jennifer Meckles and the ability to have a conversation about the role of the guard. 
Um, so, and Jennifer, these are not guards, men and women who have been working on the COVID-19 support for testing sites and logistics and transport and things like this. These are different troops. Correct. Different mission, different set of people working that job with COVID-19 compared to what's happening tonight. So we've been asking the National Guard this evening what kind of role they will have. And what we just learned in the last like 10 minutes here is that number one, we know what they won't be doing. The National Guard tells us it is not their role to act as law enforcement. They will not be making arrests tonight. Instead, what they will be doing is providing protection to building property and infrastructures. I asked the National Guard, and we've seen in some of these helicopter videos already, are there barriers going up around some of the government buildings downtown? What kind of preventative measures have already been taken? And they tell me that the city and county of Denver has already taken steps to board up city buildings and put some fences up. We've seen again some of those images in the helicopters uh, shooting tonight and in the some of the crews that are on the ground there. The National Guard tells me they're going to be staged throughout different city and county of Denver buildings. So it's not been super obvious, you know, from the field crews, Kyle, where exactly they are, but that's what they tell me. Staged throughout different city and county Denver buildings tonight and working to protect the property and the infrastructure, not out among the crowd making arrests. Makes sense. Appreciate that perspective, Jennifer. Uh, got sent a, a photo from a viewer earlier tonight of uh, some National Guard folks that were unloading at the, at the Denver Police Headquarters, and um, and I did not put eyes on it myself. I can't tell you if that's one of the places that they're protecting, but that would certainly make sense because last night, Denver Police put up uh, fences, tall fences, around their property downtown and put warnings on the outside that saying crossing onto that property was a crime in and of itself, uh, sending a strong signal that they didn't want people making a rush at that building as rioters did in Minneapolis, where they set Precinct 3 ablaze, what was it, two nights ago. Um, and it's interesting that all of the action on three nights now uh, never really went west of Broadway. Uh, everything kind of stayed Broadway to the east, almost just kind of like Broadway to Lincoln, now Broadway to Grant, and has worked in that uh, north-south uh, funnel. There's going to be a brief pause here while we bring in folks who are going to be joining us for Nine News at Nine. Welcome to Nine News at Nine. We are one hour into Denver's first citywide curfew in recent history. And what did we see when the curfew went into effect at 8 o'clock? We saw police continue their aggressive moves on protesters that we had seen start hours before. In the 4 o'clock hour, they started moving on people, but they swept down at 8 o'clock. They kicked down a makeshift barrier built in the street at Lincoln, and the crowd began to flee south. They continue to be on the move tonight. Our Chris Vanderveen is one of four teams that we have on the street tonight. He is out there with our photojournalist Foster Gaines. And Chris, it sounds like uh, you are much more in the mix than we recently saw you. Yeah, we've been making our way south on Broadway. And uh, we've been making our way. It's, it's, it's definitely a lot more louder. Look, it's well. Excuse me, guys. We're going to walk this way. I'm gonna walk this way. So this is over Broadway over here, and the reason why it's a little bit loud over here. Yeah, looks like we lost Chris's shot there. We will get Chris back when we can. Uh, and he was just about to tell us the best part of the story. Um, I have absolutely no idea what was going on there because he hadn't told us yet. What we have seen over the last hour since the curfew went into effect is that police have been pushing people south. Uh, south down Broadway. Uh, they've been uh, pushing people on Lincoln as well. At some points, they're interfering with traffic. Sometimes they're not. There's been some sporadic property damage along the way, but nothing like what we saw last night. Our Noel Brennan has been walking with the crowd and stopping to uh, bask in the glow of the occasional dumpster fire. No. Yeah, Kyle, more dumpster fires. And again, Denver, Denver Fire seems to be just chasing these tonight. Uh, we're at 11th and Logan. Uh, there is a little bit of a crowd here, but we've got two dumpster fires that are burning in an alleyway, and it looks like one of the dumpsters was kind of pushed right into the, the side of uh, the street here. So that's why uh, I think Denver Fire is out here so quickly. Um, I don't know if we can get around just, just to show you 
a little bit what we're seeing. Uh, but the street now is pretty much shut down because there's a fire truck in the middle of everything. Yeah, you know, Kyle, I was tossing for folks. You wonder if you're in you're in a residential area now, uh, Noel. We have moved out of that area where the protests have been centered for three weeks now. That's been mainly uh, government buildings and out of the area that we saw last night where there were commercial businesses that were being vandalized to the north of Colfax. You're now in an area there at 11th and Logan where there are residential buildings on all four corners. Right, Kyle, yeah, so we're, we're actually, exactly, so there's, there, there are businesses, there are certainly apartments and homes in this area. If you um, look at where the sorry, sorry. Thank you for your service. Just in a bad spot. Uh, Thank you for Kyle, your I'm going to send it back to you. We've if got you some people at, coming up yep, to us. Yep, understood. Yep, no, no problem. Yep, no problem. Um, We'll say that we, we've seen uh, we've seen a mix of folks out there tonight. Some of them uh, have uh, have engaged uh, with our journalists on the street, asking for directions, things like that. Maybe they're not from the Denver metro area. That's what the police chief said. Um, and then other folks uh, want to display their vocabulary on TV. So uh, it takes all kinds. Interestingly, we heard Denver police chief Paul Pazin suggest this outsider idea that 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 people are coming from from outside and infiltrating these protests in our community and they're the ones that are creating trouble well we looked at the 13 arrests that happened on thursday night and of the 13 people arrested on thursday night 12 of them had colorado addresses one guy from north carolina uh so uh, there were 19 more arrests made on friday night um, we have yet to get the information from police. They wouldn't give it to us yet about their booking information so that we could look up the public records on those folks. But we have not seen evidence to suggest that there are people coming in from other places to start trouble. You heard that same claim in Minnesota by the governor and by the mayor in, in Minneapolis. And you know what? Our sister station, CARE 11 Minneapolis, went through the jail records and found out that the great majority of the people who are in jail for rioting and for burglary and so forth, we're from Minnesota. So I think next time you hear somebody say it's outsiders coming in to start trouble in these communities, ask them what their proof is. We have seen a whole variety of people involved in the daytime protests and some of the nighttime acts of property damage and that sort of thing in, in Denver, but we have not seen any evidence that they're from outside the area. We're happy to take a look at it. We just haven't seen it. What we have seen is a various mix of progressive groups from people who are very mainstream elected Democratic legislators clear up to Antifa. I mean, Antifa was telling people to come out to these three days of protests. Um, so you've got those folks in the mix. You also have right-wing agitators who are proudly saying that they are going down to the protests and that they've been mixing it up with people. Uh, we have not seen evidence that, that that's a, a widespread thing, like they're somehow behind it. But what I'm trying to get across to you is that there's this cauldron of people downtown and have been for the last three days with a lot of different motivations for being down there and a, a lot of different aims. So try to avoid the temptation to just broad brush everything or to say, oh, you know what, the one political group that I don't like, they're to blame for all the bad stuff. It's the right, it's the left, it's the whatever. Everybody's down there to some degree. And it's real difficult to say who's who because everybody's got a mask on this time. And that is a real difficulty for Denver police, where they'll have people spotting at protests to figure out who are the troublemakers, how do they separate them from the crowd, how do they arrest them. A lot of times those folks are wearing masks, they're not at the front of the line, they're toward the back, they're toward the middle. This time around, everybody's got a mask on, including our Chris Vanderveen, uh, because uh, he understands the value of public health guidance. Uh, Chris, we lost you a moment ago when you were telling us what was happening at your location. Yeah, we're good. Um, it's always weird when the camera goes dark and you don't know what's going on, but we're, we're fine. We just had a bit of a technical problem. Um, I, I wanted to ask you guys, and you're going to have to stand a little bit close to me because I've got my microphone here, and I'm going to okay. take my microphone off just so I can keep hear from you guys. Um, why are you guys here tonight? 
Well, we're here to protest for Black Lives Matter, and we feel like the police brutality is just a, a little bit too much to our race. So we want to stand. We want to like continue, but like it's getting a little bit out of hand. Yeah. We but were just if, here because we wanted to protest because, like, even though we're black, like, we're all, we all bleed the same. So why yeah. are we all, like, we shouldn't be seen seen as a threat. Exactly. And so that's why we're here protesting. But um, it's getting a little out of hand. And all, like, the tear gas they're throwing is really bad. It's a little bit too much. And, like, this is not what it was yesterday. Yesterday was a little bit more peaceful. But today, I guess it's getting a little bit more rowdy. What do you make of some of these there's a, a fire uh, truck going on right now. What do you make of the message now from people that are causing some destruction? That people are just walking around looking for yeah! trouble. What do you think? People like that guy. I mean, what, what do you think of all that? Well, I feel like people are just tired of it. People are really tired and like us peacefully protesting for like many years, like trying to make our voice heard. It really hasn't like done anything. Like they're still doing it. So like people want to be violent and show like. I guess our peaceful protests are not working, so yeah. we got to be rowdy and show you guys that we're enough, and enough is enough is enough. And I think that us being rowdy is good, but sometimes it goes a little too out of hand. Like for the unnecessary stores that are getting like yeah. broken down and like all their glass being shattered, I think that is unnecessary. We should just stick to like sticking together and protesting for what we are, except for places like if they're not letting us do places, then we can like go there and be rowdy. Will you guys stay safe? Will you guys stay safe? Who's this? This is our lost her. We lost her. We really did. You good? Yeah. She's good. Well, great. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you guys so much. Thank you. You guys stay safe, okay? Thank you. Um, I wanted to give you that perspective because we're we're seeing lots of different perspectives of what's going on tonight. There's certainly a lot of people driving around right now causing problems. Can you shout and ask where they're from? I'm sorry? Can you they're yell and ask them where they're from? Yeah, they're all from Denver. Okay. Kyle? I'm just trying to prevent us from getting a month worth of emails that the girl had a Nebraska shirt on, so they're all from out of state. Out of state protesters. That's oh, all. Good. They're from Denver. Okay. Good point. Very that is not it. Excellent point. That is not an out-of-state protester. They're from the they are from uh, they're from Denver. They're actually just waiting for a ride to get out of here. I think they're right. They have I, just shown I up. Could, there you go. I could picture somebody sitting in their mom's basement making the meme right now of that poor young woman in the shirt talking about out-of-state protesters. So I wanted to make sure that we got that on the record. Thank so, you, Chris. We'll talk to you in just a moment. It, 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 Steve Stager it, it, is back in front of the uh, city and county building. Uh, and this was an area that saw uh, a lot of protest activity uh, last night. That was the area where some of the African-American protest organizers who had been out there during the day told agitators in the crowd, you are not welcome here. We don't want trouble. You do not speak for us. Go home. They did not go home. They stayed and they set cars on fire and dumpsters and they threw rocks at police and so on and so forth. But that was the place where things divided off uh, last night. Apologies, Steve. That was a very long-winded intro to you, but I wanted to get that piece of perspective in. That's okay. That's okay. You seem like you you want you had something to say. Um, so we're out here again in front of the city and county building, uh, which, again, dead quiet here, um, other than the rotors of a chopper that actually does have a spotlight. So I, I, I assume that's Air One. You were asking about Air One earlier, uh, which is the Denver police chopper. I saw a chopper flying um, and shining a spotlight down. That typically Sky 9 doesn't do that. Uh, but this is remarkable to me. I've never actually seen this at the city and county building before. It's a fence to stop people from being able to get inside and it stretches the entire length. And I don't know if you've ever been to the city and county building and you know what I'm talking about. This is a wide building and this fencing, which fencing has been a popular item today, uh, stayed in place because partially probably because of these giant concrete blocks that are here uh, holding things down and it looks like it's been staked in pretty well. Uh, but that gives you an idea just kind of we, we wanted to see what it looks like on the other side of all this, uh, especially as we heard that some of these buildings are are being protected now after what they saw last night. If Corky can show you, I've got photojournalist Corky Scholl here with me, uh, the the windows of this building that we saw in the mayor's news conference earlier today are all uh, covered in plywood right now. Uh, the same situation, I might add, at a lot of businesses uh, throughout downtown Denver. In fact, when I was pulling up uh, to uh, kind of get our coverage started today, 
I stopped by, I mentioned this on the air a little bit earlier, City O City restaurant, uh, where you saw, it was kind of a, a jarring image because you saw the scene of the last two months, a restaurant taking to-go orders on the side, but then you also saw, as if preparing for something like a hurricane, uh, a, gr a team hammering some plywood over the windows there at City O City. Uh, to try to make sure things stay safe and stay calm tonight, Kyle. But I, I thought this was something we're going to start to kind of wander this direction and just see what we see. We haven't seen many people walking around. It's pretty quiet here in downtown Denver. It just makes you think, Steve, of all of the folks who have been impacted in the last couple of, of months by, by, the, by the economic shutdown, uh, by coronavirus, uh, by all the ripple effects, who now look at their city and whether it's the building that they work in or the building that they visit or the one that they pass on their drive, now looks like it's a war zone or a hurricane came through. You know, it's, I ha I, it's demoralizing. I had, a, I had a really rough, I had a really rough conversation this morning um, with someone on Twitter, uh, a restaurant owner in downtown Denver, who said that they woke up this morning after two months of not being able to have their restaurant open and having their business cut down quite a bit, they now have to deal with the problem of a, bro a bunch of broken windows in front of that restaurant. And I asked the question that a lot of people have about insurance uh, in a case like this. You'd think an insurance claim would be worth it. That restaurant owner told me it's really a trade-off because you file the insurance claim, you still have to pay the deductible to get the windows fixed. And by that time, once you file the claim, you do tend to see your insurance go up because you've had something like this happen. Uh, so it's kind of a juggling act to deal with right now on top of the most stress that he's ever had on his business and that short time it's been open. The, these stories exist, I assume, all throughout downtown Denver uh, of people who uh, have really struggled for the last two months in the pandemic that's making both photojournalist Corky Scholl and I wear masks as we're out here. Uh, it, it also striking, I should mention this, speaking of masks, as I was walking through Civic Center Park, I, you see debris all over the place. It was, it was relatively shocking how many masks I saw spread across the park. Uh, so at least some folks at some point were, were, were practicing uh, Denver's mask order, although you don't really have to wear one out, uh, outside. Uh, but the, it, it, it's striking when you think about the impact that the last few months has had on businesses here in the city, and, and you hope that the damage that's done here is fixable and that things can start to get rolling because we were right on the verge of getting things reopened again. Yeah. Yeah. So just, is there anybody who, who says, so why is Steve wearing a mask if he's not around other people? It's because he's around full journalist Corky Scholl and they don't work together all the time and our teams have, have broken off into units yeah. that they work together all the time, almost like a family unit, so they don't have to wear masks around each other. But Steve and Corky are not typically around each other, so they're each wearing masks tonight. Uh, to protect one another's health. Just and some we have perspective there before we have a Steve relatively gets clipped short and, and put on the internet. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, a, a short mic cable between the <laughs> yes, two of you. No. We need to get eight foot cables <laughs> instead of six foot cables. <laughs> All right, I'm glad we can laugh. It's good to laugh. Steve's gotten tear gas two nights in a row, so if we can make that man laugh. That's good news. Thank you, Steve. We'll talk soon. Jeremy Hohola is a bit south of there where the crowd, as it was dispersed and forced south by riot police, did some damage along the way. Jeremy? Yeah, Kyle, you know, it is a totally different scene here at uh, 14th and Broadway. I mean, just, you know, we were just right here watching this massive chaotic scene of the crowds and the police and this conflict, and now it's just quiet and dark, but you can hear the chopper, you can kind of see police kind of drive up and down the roads here. I don't know where the crowd went because we had to leave and uh, get batteries for our, our cameras and our live units. But I want to talk about kind of like what played out here a little bit. It was almost as if as the crowd was moving away from the park as police were pushing them out. It was almost as, as if that vandalism was being created. I saw a lot of people with spray cans as they were moving, Police. moving. Sorry about that vul vulgarity the there, Police. vulgarity. Um, uh, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. 
So as we were moving uh, down south here on Broadway, it was almost as if that vandalism was being created as that crowd was being pushed down this stretch of Broadway. Uh, I heard a broken window as we made a pass our way here at the, at the library. You can see these white little spots here on the street here. This is pepper, uh, this is uh, pepper uh, pellets. And I think this might be a tear gas canister over here too. So much, so much tear gas. Uh, deployed by uh, by police today. Yeah, this looks like this is definitely looks like. Uh, yep, CS irritant. So much tear gas uh, deployed by police today. I mean, it's 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 amazing. And of course, when you look along Broadway here, this is what it looks like. There's so much graffiti everywhere. The cost uh, to repair this, to clean this up. I mean, we can't even guess what that's going to be right now. It's there's there's so much graffiti and vandalism downtown. It is everywhere right now. I've never seen anything like this before. Kyle, back to you. Hey, yeah, and one one thing that occurs to me when you say that, Jeremy, is that um, you've got both the local and the state government What's right now trying to figure out uh, which programs uh, for low-income people they're going to have to cut to what extent to make up enormous budget gaps and now they're going to have to spend money repairing buildings uh, and cleaning up damage and paying police overtime and everything else it's just the the worst stinking possible time for them to deal with another financial hit I because they're trying to figure out what time. programs are going to cut awesome you are hot indeed my friend yeah i think Oh, okay, we are. We are still hot. Yeah, you know, it's the, the, the folks who are going to have to clean this up. It's going to be, it's going to be really something just to see how much work it's going to take to to, to to clean this up. You're, Fuck you, you, police! Yeah, you can still people. You can still see. All right. Yeah, yeah we've. I think we heard that. We heard that enough in quick succession that uh, the point has been made. Uh, the point has been made. It's also spray painted all over downtown. The next time you drive down there, uh, Sky Nine is over. Grant and Pearl? Am I correct there? Grant and Pearl? Okay. Our, our producer, Erica, only had to tell me three times while I was talking with Jeremy, and I failed to retain it. But this is Grant and Pearl, where a sizable police force is moving in. It looks like, again, uh, someone has, has lit one of our uh, emblems of 2020, the dumpster fire. Uh, we've seen a number of those throughout the city tonight, and police are moving cautiously through this area. This shot, again, reminds me. You see those people on those balconies? We are in a residential neighborhood. This is the first time in three nights of clashes that significant action has happened in residential neighborhoods. Uh, so there's people in Denver who are in a position to maybe watch this on TV or look at the coverage on the Internet who are now getting a view out their window um, of, you know, the new American torch fire there um, and everything else that's happening in, in the city tonight. Um, the protest numbers have dwindled from what we saw earlier today. And if you were not watching what transpired late afternoon, you might have missed a significant posture and tactic shift from Denver police, reinforced by law enforcement from other places in the metro area. They pushed back hard and aggressively on people in the streets hours earlier than they have before. 8 p.m. was the curfew time. But the tear gas was popping at four outside of District 6 police headquarters at Colfax in Washington. Five o'clock hour, they were popping pepper rounds at people at Civic Center bus station, kitty corner from the Capitol. By seven o'clock, the barricades were going up on Lincoln that the crowd was throwing up. Police were aggressively using tear gas. And I guess I, I point this out to say it wasn't as if some switch flipped at 8 o'clock tonight. And I think we're also going to hear from some of the people who were out there this afternoon. In fact, I have heard from people who are out there this afternoon who say that they felt like law enforcement didn't abide by the agreement, which is if you're out here doing your thing peacefully, the city clear up to the mayor himself has said, we will encourage you and we will protect you. And today, some people got tear gas on the lawn of the Capitol, and it was in that gray area that typically has been in the evening, that gray area between, oh, when does a protest turn into a riot? When are folks being peaceable, and, and, when, and when have folks crossed a line? It was in that gray area 
that police move today. And that wasn't the case in the last two days. And perhaps police looked at the last two days and said, you know what? The reason why stuff got out of hand, the reason why a car burned last night in the middle of town, the reason why shops were vandalized and things were stolen is because we waited too long. Tonight they moved in early. So you can like that, you can dislike that, you can think that was a, a good idea or not, but that's what happened tonight. Want to go down to the ground below okay. where Sky 9 is showing Stand us by. police on the move. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that you can see anything. Yeah, go right ahead, Noel. Oh, hey, Kyle. Yeah, so we're right at 12th and Logan. You can see all the officers here in the middle of the intersection. They just walked up here. They've been firing pepper balls at the, the small groups of people that have been uh, congregating here. Um, so that tear gas has just been kind of wafting through the air. Um, they're trying to get people out of the streets. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there was a dumpster fire that we saw further down uh, 12th. Uh, I don't know if that's maybe the fourth, fifth dumpster fire, dumpster fire that Ann and I have just seen tonight. Um, I'm not quite sure what they're, <clears throat> they're doing at the moment, but uh, they did scatter a, a bunch of people that were just kind of congregating in little pockets. Uh, they're flashing their flashlights at them and then uh, they're firing pepper balls. Uh, let's walk a little bit toward them because it seems like they're they're marching down uh, 12th. I'm just kind of curious if there's another group of people that are blocking the road at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, they're just they're just moving down further uh, down 12th at the moment. It doesn't look like anyone's blocking the streets. Uh, most of the people are on the sidewalks, but uh, Kyle, I mentioned that dumpster fire. If we walk over here and you can, you can see it. It's uh, kind of raging at the moment. Striking images that we're seeing, Kyle. Uh, but this is, this has been the norm over the past hour. These flashing lights and then dumpster fires that are burning in alleyways as police are moving and pushing small groups of protesters. Um, trying to, to break up the larger groups that we have not seen um, in, in some time. So we're going to keep following uh, the police here and the, the small groups of protesters. All right. Noel, thank you very much. Um, let's go to Jeremy Hohola on the ground now at his position north of there. Jeremy. Okay. Yeah, Kyle, we're at the corner of uh, 13th and, uh, well, it looks like yeah, we're at 13th and Lincoln. This guy was sitting here in the middle of the road, and he's really testing the patience of the SWAT officers, which is headed north here on on uh, Lincoln here. Um, it's it, it it appears there's still people out. You know, some some small groups of people walking around that are defying the eight o'clock curfew. I have not seen anybody get arrested yet. I, I don't think uh, any of my colleagues have seen anybody get arrested yet, from what I've uh, what I've heard but I have not seen anybody get arrested yet. I've seen officers with zip ties, uh, but uh, nothing yet where anybody has been in, uh, put in uh, zip ties or, or, or handcuffs. Again, we're at the corner of uh, 13th and Lincoln. Uh, there, there appears to be like people out though. Like here, look, look at these motorcycle guys here. Uh, these guys have been kind of making noise through downtown as they drive around here. And it's like the, the attraction down here. That way I can uh, have some audio here. There, there's still people kind of just driving around, looking around and trying to just you know, do whatever, I guess, at the end of this protest. There's no more large groups together. It's been kind of weird to follow the crowd and you can see people in the high rises kind of looking down, watching all of this play out. Uh, but uh, we're still gonna kind of walk around downtown Kyle and uh, see what we see. and. Uh, we'll, we'll report back to you if we see anything of significance, but it, it's, it's clear that the crowd where we are at least has clearly dissipated. Well, that is good news indeed. And if, uh, if, if guys on crotch rockets are again uh, racing through Denver, then as they say lately, nature is healing. Uh, so we'll take that. Want to show you what happened outside the state capitol when the clock struck eight and Denver went under its first citywide curfew in recent memory. Protesters built this uh, makeshift uh, barrier. Uh, so crowd puts up this barrier. They've been facing off with cops. Uh, uh, fair to call some rioters. I mean, there are people throwing stuff at, at cops. Um, 
so they put up this barrier. This is on Lincoln, all right? So you're right in front of the state capitol, all right? At the bottom of the screen is Colfax. Camera's kind of pointed south. And shortly after 8 o'clock, police unleashed a bevy of tear gas and cleared folks off of that barricade in a split second. It was unbelievable. For all they had said to Noel Brennan out there about how, you know, they're going to make their stand at the barricade, you know, and everybody thinks it's going to be, you know, Les Mis, you know. Uh, who's seen Les Mis? Um, there you go. Uh, people scattered when the tear gas came in, and a barricade undefended is a barricade that is easily just kicked down by riot police, which is precisely what they did. They just walked up knocked it down and kept on going. And that was the moment that tonight turned. And from the perspective of somebody whose only goal is to, to accurately tell you what's going on and to have as few people on either side of this get hurt tonight, if everybody goes home to their families, that's a win for me. That's, that's the side I'm rooting for. Um, this was the moment when it looked like, holy cow, this might end without people getting really hurt tonight. Because if there was an entrenched position in front of the Capitol with a barricade and a long slog between protesters and police there, that, that could have been really dangerous for a lot of people on both sides of that line. So it was something to see when police went through that barricade like a hot knife through butter and away this thing went to the south. And ever since then, it has not had the volatility that it had from 5 until 8 p.m. tonight, the volatility that it had last night, even the volatility that it had Thursday night. As soon as that barricade was overrun and things went on the move, things calmed considerably in the sense that it was not as much of a direct violent clash between those in the streets and police. Here again, we have America's emblem uh, at 12th and Washington. 12th in Washington. Again, just a reminder that this is happening outside of people's windows. Uh, just a reminder that this, again, is happening in the middle of a pandemic in which people are worried about their respiratory health. And we have a combination of smoke from dumpster fires and pepper balls and the occasional tear gas, uh, which is now uh, being deployed. I will say we have seen precious little use of the tear gas in the residential parts of town, have seen it a time or two, have seen the pepper balls, and obviously the dumpster fires continue. The crowd is on the move south. Uh, if we're uh, looking at the number streets, they're in the area of 8, 9, 10 right now. And as things move south, it begins to splinter out a little bit. Uh, it looks like it's splintering to the east. All right, so everything, Everything tonight has been confined basically to Broadway into the east. All right, Broadway's your north, south, and it's to the east. Uh, heaviest action was on Lincoln for a while. Uh, as we have begun to move south, uh, it's split onto some of the other north-south streets, onto Washington and onto Grant. Trying to give people as specific information as possible, uh, because if you're watching in Denver and you live in that part of town, uh, generalizations don't help you. You want streets. So I'll try to give you as, as many um, as many street references as possible. Um, it really, truly does appear like things are de-escalating in Denver tonight. On a day in which the mayor threw down the gauntlet this morning and said that the city had had enough and that what we saw on Friday night would not be tolerated again. If you unplugged on a Friday night, congratulations to you. What you missed was the most violent night of protests in Denver in years. Rocks and bottles thrown at police, tear gas at protesters, um, 19 people arrested, a car burned, vandalism, windows smashed, stores robbed, and the mayor said it would not happen again. Noel Brennan. Uh, is our, uh, our man on, on the fires tonight. Uh, just one to another to another, Noel. Yeah, Kyle, we just walked up on this one. Uh, we're at uh, 12th in Pennsylvania. It looks like we've got uh, at least two dumpsters and just some 
trash that have been thrown in the middle of a, that has been thrown in the middle of the street here. Uh, it looks like Denver Fire has has just gotten here, uh, but yeah, these are this is right in the middle of the street. The other fires that we've seen have been pretty much in the alleyways. Um, you know, this is coming pretty close to some of the parked cars here. Uh, luckily, we've got Denver Fire that's arriving to take care of uh, these these dumpster fires. It's the most dumpster fires, Kyle, I think I've covered in a half hour period, but um, yeah, this is, looks like trash bins, mattress, and uh, at least two, maybe two, three dumpsters. But again, Denver Fire is here, so they should be able to take care of this uh, pretty quickly. We've got people that are just out here taking pictures of this. Um, Denver police are in the area. We've seen them driving around. Um, they have been firing pepper balls at people, uh, dispersing those small groups uh, that have formed. Um, again, this looks pretty contained. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it's not going to impact any of the cars that are parked here. And again, fortunate that Denver Fire is here. They should be able to take care of these dumpster fires, more dumpster fires. They should be able to take yeah. care of them pretty quickly. Yeah. Kyle? Yeah. Uh, if you happen to live in that part of town and that is your trash or recycling receptacle that is burning there, or if yours burns elsewhere in town tonight, or if you just happen to lose yours, uh, just call 311 and they'll replace it in like a week. It's <laughs> happened to me twice, not fire. So like I've, I've lost them or they fell into the truck or whatever. They get them back to you like that. They're absolutely fantastic. That's a side note, but the more you know. Noel, thank you very much. Um, so I have to tell you, it's really encouraging to see that it looks like the folks who came out to protest tonight are going to be able to leave safely. They're going to do their thing. They're going to leave safely. Uh, there are people who came out tonight to throw a rock or a bottle at, at a cop tonight. Uh, that police officer, uh, thankfully, has a face shield on, has another shield or whatever else, and is well protected. But it looks like both of those folks are going to go home safe tonight. We have one police officer taken to the hospital in three nights. Uh, that officer was hit in the head with a rock. The mayor said yesterday that that officer's doing okay. Uh, there was only one injury to a police officer last night that the mayor uh, thought was serious enough to bring up in his conversation with me on the air around 11 o'clock. Uh, police officer had been hit in the leg with something that was thrown. They didn't even know what it was, but uh, enough that it was considered an injury. Um, obviously, you don't want to see anybody injured. You don't want to see, you know, uh, anybody walk away getting hit with a rock or an injury from, you know, a pepper round or this or that or whatever else. But the bottom line is, it looks like Denver has the opportunity to get out of three really contentious nights with no serious injuries to anybody. So let's hope. Um, hopefully that is a shared goal of a lot of people in the city. Um, as we move now uh, two and a, or one and a half hours, 90 minutes into Denver's curfew, I think this curfew would be a much bigger deal if so many people weren't recently under the stay home order. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's like there's going to be a curfew tonight. Oh, well, well, what's that about? Oh, well, just do the thing that we told you to do like four weeks ago, but do it for, for two overnights when you're probably home anyway. Um, but we have to mention the curfew is unprecedented, I, I, at least in recent history. All right. I, I went looking for evidence of a Denver curfew, could not find anything other than youth curfews that dated back to the 1890s. Uh, they would ring a curfew whistle three times at 8 or 9 o'clock, depending on the time of year, and it would tell all the kids that were 16 or younger that they had to go back home. This is on Pearl, I believe. It's another fire on Pearl that's being extinguished. That appears to be in the street, not in an alley. Um, if I could get a cross on that just to give folks an idea of where that is along Pearl, that would be helpful. Sky 9 over another series of fires as things just kind of continue to uh, to move south. We're headed into an area of town that has a lot of those taller uh, condo buildings um, and is almost uh, strictly residential on a lot of streets. Then you'll have some restaurants and so forth uh, tucked in here and there. Um, we have not seen, for the better part of 20 minutes now, uh, significant massings of crowds. Uh, the last gatherings that we saw appeared to be in the dozens, not hundreds. Um, so again, you can come into this with whatever uh, 
with whatever political mindset you want. Uh, you can come into this with, um, you know, whatever view of, of police you want. Uh, but the bottom line is there's a good chance that the way this went down tonight, folks are going to go home. My producers are wondering why I'm ignoring them, and the reason why is because my earpiece has failed, and I need them to clear IFB line 14 so that I can call back into my phone and I can hear their sweet voices again. And until then, they're left just with me droning on and on and talking at these Sky 9 shots. So if they could clear that phone line, I'll call back in on my earpiece. Um, so um, where we are right now is that 90 minutes into the curfew, um, Denver police have the situation firmly in hand compared to the last two nights. Compared to any normal night in Denver, oh, this would be the biggest deal in the world. Can you believe that this is going on? But compared to what we've seen the last two nights, this is a remarkably stable situation based on what was happening in front of the Capitol at 8 p.m. Let's go back to Noel Brennan now, who has been fire spotting. Let's not go back to Noel Brennan. Um, if you're curious uh, about some of the, the signal troubles, but also the mobility of our crews, you should know that basically we, we walk around with these backpacks that allow us to go live from various places around the city. It's essentially cell phone technology. So you're not tied to the big old TV live trucks that you might have seen in the 80s or 90s. Uh, it's good because we can walk around with them. Uh, it's bad because it's a cell phone signal. And as you well know, cell phone signals in Denver sometimes are, say it with me, a dumpster fire. Let's go back to what the mayor said this morning when he said that Denver would not tolerate another night like we saw last night. He said 8 p.m. was the time. He said the curfew was the thing. And he said that enforcement was the way they were going to do it. What happened in our city last night, a city we all love, a city still working to keep safe from the coronavirus pandemic, to recover economically. What happened was reckless, inexcusable, and unacceptable. I want to be clear. Those who took part in the earlier demonstrations yesterday, peacefully and with, with respect for others in our city, are not the ones we are talking about here. We had three successful demonstrations yesterday where people expressed their outrage over the death of George Floyd without any violent or destructive acts. But I want you to look behind me. I asked our contractors who were here to board up these buildings to leave them uncovered so that the people of our city could see the destruction that took place. This building, this is your building, put here to serve you, vandalized. Across the street, this morning, I took a walk to survey the damage at Civic Center Park and around downtown. Across the street, the McNichols Building, one of the very few Carnegie libraries in this nation, someone threw a Molotov cocktail to set it on fire last night. That was Denver Mayor Michael Hancock talking about the city where he's lived since he was um, real young, I think like a couple months old. Um, the mayor was the mayor was mad today. The mayor seemed sad yesterday. He choked up yesterday morning talking about the life of George Floyd and talking about what the reality of police brutality toward black people in America means to him uh, as a black man, as the father of black children. Uh, he talked about that and was very emotional and talked of solidarity with the protesters. This morning, the mayor was mad and he said that that he was done with things. Let's go back out to Noel Brennan. Kyle, you know, speaking of dumpster fires, because that's what photojournalist Ann Herbst and I have been chasing the past hour or so, we thought we had seen a lot of fires ourselves, just in our experience. Uh, we're at 12th and Pearl. We just saw firefighters make quick work of three dumpster fires and a pile of trash that had been set aflame right in the middle of 12th. We were talking to fire crews out here Again, who, who put these out really quickly. You got a feel for them. A firefighter told us that 
they have dealt with 30 to 40 small fires tonight alone. 30 to 40 fires. It's incredible to think of how busy they are tonight. And the firefighter told us what's making it so difficult is that they are running into some folks who are making their job a lot harder. He said people have thrown things at them. They're yelling at them. And they're just trying to go to different areas of the city uh, to make sure that these dumpster fires don't become something larger. Uh, but the firefighter told us that he'd seen uh, dumpster fires, piles of trash that had been set on fire. And he also mentioned cars had been set on fire. He mentioned uh, some location on Logan. He had seen cars set aflame. So these guys are just as busy as the police officers are tonight. Uh, and again, it just strikes me 30 to 40 fires already that they've responded to. Um, and this is the latest one right here at, at 12th and Pearl, a few dumpsters set on fire. I, I, I have no doubt that we will likely see more uh, as the night progresses, Kyle. Yeah, thank you, Noel. I just, you know, I just think about it. Somebody's, somebody's car out there is damaged because somebody m wants to make a point about um, uh, uh, some police officers uh, did terrible thing in, in Minneapolis have done terrible things in other places so somebody's car gets set on fire uh, and you just wonder like is that person working in a restaurant Are they on unemployment right now like what's their life like with with the economic collapse and and COVID-19 and everything else and they're going to find out tonight or tomorrow morning that uh, their car got set on fire it's just yeah I don't know um, what we're hearing now is that police are moving in and beginning to try to disperse some of the last groups it's pretty astonishing, Jeremy Hohola, that they have done this without mass arrests. We said at the beginning of the night uh, that we weren't certain that they had yeah. the numbers versus the protesters to arrest people. And now that they do have the numbers, it seems like they're at least just trying to get people to just go. Yeah, you know, they I've been I've been standing here on the corner of 14th and Broadway now for the past 10 minutes uh, right next to the Supreme Court building catty corner from uh, the, the Capitol building. There's some stragglers walking around this area and you can see uh, to my left over here. We'll have Austin Penn over here. You can see Denver police officers here. These guys have been telling the stragglers, hey, you need to leave. You need to get out of here. And then every few minutes I can hear on a loudspeaker uh, what sounds like to be a very official announcement. You can hear it. I'm going to stop. Okay, that's 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 uh, an officer on a megaphone telling people that they need to leave. So it's clear now that people should not be down here. Uh, we should note that um, there are exemptions to that curfew uh, for essential workers and uh, for the press and other workers who need to go out and do uh, their, their work. So uh, there's still some people walking around here. Police have not arrested anybody that I have seen. Right now, they could probably arrest someone because they would be violating curfew if they're walking through here. But we haven't really seen there goes the Aurora Police Department, the SWAT unit there. Uh, we haven't really seen anybody get cuffed. So police have really just been urging people to move along. And I think the, the, the reason may be, Kyle, and I'm just speculating here, is that we're still in a pandemic. Uh, the jail here in Denver has had an issue with inmates and, and, and COVID spreading within the jail. And so there's, there's probably a messaging out there to police. Let's try to keep people out of jail. We don't want a lot of people going to jail tonight because of, uh, of the pandemic. So that's what I would speculate tonight on why maybe we're not seeing a lot of people getting arrested tonight. But uh, I haven't seen anybody get arrested, but here we are. We're sitting on this very quiet corner now of 14th and, um, and Lincoln as we stand here. And it was just such a different scene, scene here a few, just a couple of hours ago. So. Here we are. We'll keep walking around and we'll let you know if we see anything of significance. Kyle, back to you. All right. Jeremy Hohola was in the thick of it earlier tonight when the tear gas was popping and everything else at Colfax and Lincoln. Now a much calmer scene as Denver police are issuing some warnings to the stragglers that they could be arrested. Back to Colfax and Lincoln. And what a difference less than two hours makes. Our Chris Vanderveen is there. That was the standoff line, Chris. Yeah, I'm over at uh, Sherman. We made our way a little bit. We're at Sherman and uh, Colfax right now. Um, Kyle, I, I do want to bring up something that is potentially 
a problem. I don't want to make too much of it right now, but essentially what you have going on right now, as you see a number of a line of police officers go by us on Colfax, is that you have a lot of people just sort of milling about with really sort of, not exactly aimless, but they really don't have anything to do. Simultaneously, you still have a lot of cars in the area, um, people driving around in a small block radius, and essentially um, without anything to do themselves. So the question is going to be, do these, sorry, we just hit a tree. Um, do we just let these people mill about? I'm gonna, let's, let's kind of walk side by side. This feels like a little bit dangerous right now. Um, do we let these people kind of mill about throughout the night in their cars driving around, wondering what they're gonna do? In some, in some areas, it feels like a bar just let out and people are just wondering what the heck they're gonna do. Or, or is, is this just gonna be the status quo for the next hour? or so. Um, and that's really the, sort of the interesting question. Every once in a while we'll see a number of police cars sort of motor off to another area. We may hear a bang about a block or two away. But the activity in this area has gone way down. But it doesn't mean people have left completely. There are still cars around here. There's still people sort of wanting. And you see this. So now this is the, the intersection of Colfax and Grant. And so what's everyone going to do? Um, I don't want to have any, offer any predictions there. There's not a lot of people in this area. Um, if police department wanted to make a big deal out of the small number of people that are here right now, they certainly could. They would have the numbers. But what happens as we get into the next hour and the next hour after that? What happens with all that? That's a question I just want to throw out there because we're sort of entering in a time where people are just sort of like walking around. I talked to somebody and I'm like, when did you get here? And he's like, oh, I just got here like 10 minutes ago. I go, what are you going to do? He's like, I don't know. And he's like, where's everybody at? I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, I'll go try to find them. And that's really kind of what you're seeing right now. So I'll throw it back to you for now. Um, hey man, how are you doing? I'm all right, sorry, am I interrupting? No, you're all good. You all good, you good? Yeah, I'm good, I'm just breathy. Yeah, no worries. Well, hey, you stay safe, okay? You too, guys. Um, they are taking pot shots at press. I know. I, I appreciate this. A guy's guy warned us that there's people taking pot shots at press. We've experienced some of that. Um, some people getting angry. Um, for the most part, the crowd's been pretty cool. Um, but that's that's kind of where we're at right now. That's the situation on the ground. Kyle, back to you. So, Chris, you bring up a really good point, which is that while the concentration of people near the Capitol facing off with police, rocks, tear gas, back and forth, a high level of danger for those people, but in a concentrated area. So most of the rest of the city could just kind of sit back and watch it. And we don't want to unnecessarily concern folks, but if you live near the downtown core tonight, you need to have some kind of awareness about your property and about things that are going on because there are people who are going to kind of sort around in the city and they're frustrated. They have very real grievances about things that are going on in America. And some of those grievances are manifesting themselves as fires or has broken windows or so on and so forth. So folks just need to be cautious tonight, I guess is what I'm saying. I think that's what you're saying too. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna just show you. I mean, we've got an individual over here sort of bringing up the signs in this area. We've seen people drive through Colfax that's open at some point in the night. The car activity is down this moment, but it doesn't mean it's gone. And as I look sort of south on Grant, there's still some folks over that area. So I don't wanna, again, I don't wanna make too much of this, but it is sort of this sort of like boredom has set in by a number of people just sort of wandering aimlessly around wondering what to do and sort of do they go home a lot of them i get the sense are just simply going to go home or do they hang out a little bit longer and see what happens after that don't know back to you all right thank you chris want to quickly answer a question that came in from a, a viewer kathleen via twitter direct message i've been trying to answer as many questions as i can here while your reporters are, while our reporters are giving you perspective kathleen said the second alert from the city of denver tonight was a little confusing about the curfew seemed like it stretched through the day tomorrow no 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 kathleen it's just an overnight curfew it is an 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew tonight and then again tomorrow night so sunday night into monday morning our steve stager is standing by Councilman Chris Hines from the Perfect District 10. Perfect 10. Perfect 10. Kyle, I am here at the corner of Grant and Colfax, pretty much kitty corner from where Chris Vanderveen is, and I just ran into Councilman Chris Hines. How are you? 
I'm I'm safe. How are you? Yeah, uh, we are safe as well. It appears to be a safe night. First, why are you out here tonight? Uh, I'm a public servant. I think that um, I think that what we're hearing today, first of all, is that people are afraid that you know someone has been murdered, right? Um, uh, but we also hear time and time again that they don't believe their government is representative of them. Of them. And I'm a public servant, and I'm trying to put the servant back into public servant. And I think it's important for me to be out here seeing what's going on in my district and in my city. So what did you observe as you were out here today? Uh, I, the, I mean, I saw day and night. I saw that uh, there were a lot of peaceful pro protests during the day. And what I see tonight is I see dumpster fires. The dumpster fire right there is a dumpster fire over there. There's a dumpster fire on 16th. I see uh, people that are uh, throwing rocks. I see a lot of vandalism. And, uh, and I uh, fully support people's right to peaceably assemble and their freedom to sp uh, speak and be heard. Um, but this damage that is happening right now is, is just, it's, it's unacceptable. Could you analyze the police response for us? I mean, what did you see and how did you feel the police responded to this tonight? Well, so um, I would you know start on Thursday. Thursday, um, you know, we I I saw that there was a Facebook post on Wednesday, and there were maybe 60 people who were supposed to come, and we were totally unprepared. I mean, you know, we did not expect the kind of response that that actually happened. Uh, so, and, uh, sorry, underprepared, not totally unprepared. I think that's unfair since we're live on camera. Um, <laughs> But, uh, uh, you know, we did not expect the, what, what happened. And then Friday, it was way worse. And so, um, you know, I, uh, I support the mayor's decision to, uh, uh, to, to have a stronger response and for us to have the first um, shutdown in recent history in the city of Denver, because we have a lot of people who are, who are uh, bent on destroying property and are not reflective of the movement. So. Live over fucking property. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to move the microphone away from the profanity because we're on live television. Um, but Councilman, you, I do see it in your eyes. You took a little bit of this tear gas tonight. Can you describe how that feels? Yeah, it's um, so. It's actually, I had tear gas um, last night and the night before. Um, right before the curfew, they released a new, uh, you know, new for these. Uh, uh, events here in Denver, uh, type of gas, I guess, CS gas, so it's uh, quite a bit more destructive, and um, uh, you know, for for me. Um, but uh, but again, it's it's I should be out here while everyone else is suffering. I should be here, um, you know, observing and documenting, and just as you are. So thank you very much for doing that. Hey, Councilman, my last question for you: What do you expect to see tomorrow and in the coming days? Do you expect this to continue to intensify, or do you think tonight kind of put uh, not an end to it, but kind of slowed it down. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I would love to have a crystal ball and tell the future and, and be a fortune teller. Um, I I see escalation. Um, you know, there's there's fireworks. People are bringing fireworks. Out. Protesters are bringing fireworks. Um, I would agree like that, that there there should be move. lives over property, move. but we should. How about we have both? How about we have lives and property? So, thank you. Appreciate your time. Yes, Thank sir. you so Thank much. You. Stay safe out here tonight. Yes. Councilman Chris Hines joining me live at the corner of, Te or of Grant and Colfax. Hard to believe that you run into a Denver City Councilman at 9.55 at night on a night like tonight, but uh, we're seeing some activity starting to move here down Colfax. Uh, oh, someone just threw something. I, I, I love that that motion where, where somebody throws something at the police car going by and then they instantly put their hands up like, I didn't throw that. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a fascinating maneuver. Uh, I should note, Kyle, that going around the corner right now is a team from the Adams County Sheriff. Uh, we saw the Aurora Police Department so far tonight. Uh, and as you mentioned, we saw Jeffco last night. The Adams County Sheriff has been helping out. We saw them stabilize in some areas around the 16th Street Mall. And it looks like Denver Fire, who has a very busy night, is on the way to something else. Kyle, I'll send it back to you. All right, Steve Steger drowned out by the fire truck there in Denver's Perfect 10, talking to Chris Hines. Back to Noel Brennan, uh, who I believe is a bit south of there. And uh, Noel, you've been fire spotting tonight. I'm curious, do you continue to see 
crowds of protesters or are you just seeing what's left in people's wake? Yeah, Kyle, I think we're just seeing little pockets of people. We have not come across a big group uh, of protesters in, in quite some time. Uh, but we've seen, frankly, yeah, a lot more dumpster fires. Uh, this is right at Pearl and 14th, just a couple blocks away from where we saw our last dumpster fire last time we checked in with you guys. Uh, Denver Fire has already mostly taken care of this. Uh, it's still smoldering just a little bit. Uh, we have talked about other agencies that have come in to, to help Denver police. Uh, Douglas County Sheriff's Office uh, is here. That's the officers you're looking at right now, uh, standing in the middle of the street. Uh, Denver Fire, as I mentioned, uh, has been super busy tonight. They, uh, there was a firefighter that told me they've, they've dealt with 30 to 40 different small fires tonight alone. Dumpster fires like the one that you're looking at or what's left of them, small fires that, you know, pieces of trash that had just been set aflame. Um, and also uh, cars set on fire, Kyle, on Logan is what the firefighter told us. We didn't get a cross street on that. Just that uh, cars in a, in a carport had been set on fire. Um, again, if we find out exactly where that is, we might go check it out. Uh, as Denver Fire now clearing what's left of the dumpster fires out of the street so, uh, so people can start driving down here again, Kyle. Uh, we're going to keep following and likely we'll, we'll find more fires. It, hopefully all of them end up just like that one, uh, well contained and, and, uh, and not putting any lives yep. in danger. Noel Brennan, thank you very much. Back to Sky 9, they are over Pearl and Colfax right now. So this gives us a view a bit east, bit northeast of where we have been for a lot of tonight. Um, and what you can see from that vantage point is just a lot of law enforcement around the city, a bit of traffic and no crowds of people. It is really pretty remarkable the way that this has shifted in two hours from what's going to happen at the barricade between those hundreds if not thousands of people in the street and the amassed law enforcement from several jurisdictions went from that at eight o'clock to this as we approach 10 o'clock tonight heard the folks who organized the afternoon protest that striking scene where people laid down in front of the state capitol on their stomachs, hands behind their heads, saying, I can't breathe. Laid there for eight, nine minutes, just as George Floyd did in his final moments in Minneapolis. And you heard those organizers say that what was going to go down tonight was an insult to what they were trying to do and the message that they were trying to send. Not a monolithic view, because there is no such thing as a monolithic view. People disagree about tactics. They disagree about what works and what doesn't. But the people who brought you those scenes earlier today, of thousands of people, the largest protest crowd in three days in Denver, begged folks not to make it another night of rock and bottle throwing and of window smashing. We saw a bit of it.